Welcome back, everybody. This is our third episode now of the first run of The Hook with our Pathfinder second edition adaptation to Curse the Crimson Throne, which has been uh, a lot of fun, honestly, guided by the power of this guide I found on Pathfinder Infinite that does 96% of the work for me. Uh, I have very much been enjoying bringing this old adventure into the future. It adapts quite well. It's a not a terribly difficult translation, even if they didn't have this. This just does a small bit of math for me, basically, and stops me from referencing a couple of tables, more or less. But, brought together as five individuals seeking vengeance over a minor crime lord in the docks area of the town, you have brought low Gadrin Lamb. But, your backstories, your horrible zombie growling, <laughs> notwithstanding, as you emerged back into the streets of Corvosa, the city had descended into chaos. You had only been in there gone for maybe the better part of an hour, and you had, as you worked your way around some of the outer piers, heard maybe a little bit of the building of this, but it has crossed the threshold while you were dealing with Lamb down below. You can see smoke barely visible from the red glow across the skyline in the distance as the sun has mostly set by this point. You hear the clanging of the city's alarm bells mashing with a clamor of steel throughout the streets around the west uh, or the uh, west docks here. Town criers shout above the chaos, carrying the news down from Castle Corvosa. The king is dead! Long live the queen! To which raucous cries roaring boos and counter calls of hang the queen the usurper must die Maybe some of these crowds mingling through the streets literal torch and pitchfork in hand it has come to madness as you emerged to all of this what Corvosan guard may be in sight further down some of these roads desperately doing their best to corral the chaos a uh, small detachment of Sable Company, mounted upon their hippogriffs, flew overhead, coming in from the east, beelining it back towards Castle Corvosa at the heart of the city. On their left flank, one of their formation uh, lists pretty heavily to the left, the hippogriff bearing a clear and apparent injury, and a brief light spray of warm red rain spattering across the street just a few feet away from the group of you. It starts to sink from this formation, losing altitude. The animal panics a bit further before losing control entirely, slamming into the side of a building just a couple of streets over with a crunch audible from here. Ugh. As we'd come out, I believe Darren... <laughs> I need to check on my father. Immediately. <laughs> we, I I need to check on my father. Where can we meet up? We need to meet again. Uh, how about the... Um, what, 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 what about the, 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 the fortune teller's place? I need to go. Yes, fortune teller's place. That's a good place. All right, I'll meet you there. Uh, and running through the streets. Maybe maybe she'll know what to do. Maybe she'll have some information. Well, she's dead. <laughs> he had what? found her head yeah. in a hat box. You didn't forget she's a ghost, did what? you? She's a ghost? Sure, as far as we can hat. tell. Oh, <clears throat> that 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 explains why I have her cards. You you did find her severed head in a hat box. Very clearly, he, huh? He, he 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 did he did he did, but but he doesn't he doesn't want to think about it. He's not thinking about it. He didn't <laughs> find anything. So so floblin. Yeah. To try to speak. You notice something? Since we stuck between your teeth, maybe you should uh, check. What is Dark Heart 1985? Oh, 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 point oh, oh, card for you. And while we're at it, um, speaking of the reversal train. of fates, 
me and Zerf are going to blind trade. Okay. Fair enough. Cold foo. I'm coming for you. <laughs> what? Hate that. All right. But four of you. I, I, um, I mean, we can meet in the square. We, we, we're meeting at the fortune teller's we're gonna, place. You remember how to get to the fortune teller place, right? That's where we're going to meet, I guess, when... I mean, I got the scent, so yeah. yeah. Meet in the morning. I'm gonna have to deal with this for tonight. I, I guess, I guess, yeah, 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 yeah. We should. Um, uh, I'm gonna go check on uh, on on him, the guy that just crashed into a building. That sounds good. Um, I'm just gonna walk that way then. Um, is this typical for cities? I'm guessing not. Not exactly, well, but really. while we're at it, I'm at least gonna check these guys and on time. No reason to leave him here with all this riding going on. That's that's fair. I'm Turn. I'm going to lie low because everyone's going to think it's my fault. I don't think anyone in the white right mind was going to blame the death of a king on a little goblin no one even knows about. I mean, to be fair, of course, humans humans just look at me and they want to try and kill me. No one in the city's in the right minds, anyways. I I guess I'm just gonna head that way back towards the fortune teller's place and see. This is very odd. Very odd indeed. Arden, you're just going you're, straight there? Yeah, I'm just going straight there. Well, Arden, when you're done over there, I'll be back inside the fishery. Just meet oh. me here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, uh, Reth heads back inside as John leaves the fortune teller's place. And Arden, where are you? I'm, I'm going to go ch- check on the guy oh, that just... I'm going to check on the, the hippogriff that just crashed a little ways over. And Floblin is... I'm going to uh, kind of sneak back into the alleys and... Uh, Try to avoid getting noticed while the chaos is going. I'm going to disappear now. <laughs> so as uh, everyone kind of parts their different ways here briefly, uh, Rhett's got the shortest distance to go. You're just heading right back inside the fishery here. Yeah, you can't leave people sitting there untied at night with a riot going on. Yeah, you, it would be up. easy enough for you to get back in. and uh, you, you, there, Obviously, everyone's where you left them 30 minutes ago. No one's waking up or woken up or moved. Uh, Yargin behind his desk as you uh, undo his binds. Uh, what are you doing with him? Just untying him? Just leaving him there? Untie and make sure they don't have any weapons. Nothing like that. Any acids specifically <laughs> on this one. Looking him over. Uh, I think you've already taken the knife from Yargin when you looked him over the first yeah. time. Just um, double checking, making sure there's nothing there could be dangerous with him and the gnome. He's got a uh, ring of keys on his hip of maybe about half a dozen, mostly fairly small, one larger, much chunkier, rough wrought iron one. Uh, but the rest of them looking like they probably go to like shelves or cabinets probably throughout the building. Uh, as far as the acids are concerned, you still got all these alchemical tools up on the table, uh, but you grabbed all of the things that look like they were finished yeah. products. So it's uh, a question of whether there's any more of it squirreled away, I guess. Uh, if you're quickly looking through the room, because he does have both the desk and the cabinet in here, you can find a couple more things scattered around. Uh, the large cabinet he had kind of on, on the opposite side of the door to the front area where his desk is has more of these alchemical tools in it, uh, less of the actual glassware and kit and more of the uh, testing equipment and piping and, and things you'd need to, to rig it up. Functionally, uh, alchem- alchemist tools are there in an alchemist lab. Uh, as well as one more uh, decently larger and thicker kind of cylindrical glass jar of something uh, capped with a metal lid, uh, not stoppered to be airtight like most of the ones that are on the table with cork and wax. Taking all the tools and whatever's in the, the glass, he's not allowed to have those. <laughs> you nah. lost your alchemist's tool privileges, these my can, friend. I don't care what's happening to these. He's not keeping them. You also find another strange little card. Uh, Darren, good thing you have the handbook. Is that the thing you use in the bookmark actually a card? <laughs> <laughs> How far to this? I'm checking as he runs off down the road here from Handsome Ganker. Hmm. Hold the line. Steady, steady. Uh, oh, that's you. Pretty good for <laughs> sounds our, pretty good. Uh, ranger, sounds pretty good. Dagger ranger here. All right, fair enough. Uh, but as you come around the corner to <laughs> head downstairs, uh, you have giggles and hook shanks at the bottom of the stairs kind of in a heap where they've just been left. 
Uh, oh no, Giggles fell into the vat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Giggles is a uh, fish, fish paste. Gone from sight at this point. That man is gone now. Though it's just kind of hook shanks at mm-hmm. the bottom, still with a decent spray of dark blood from the uh, vicious wound that John had dealt to Giggles. Uh, this gnome has been beaten and thrown down the stairs, hit in the head with a flail. He's He's not in great shape, but, you know, he is alive and just unconscious still. Uh, untying his bonds, looking him over. I don't think anyone actually grabbed any of his stuff, because by the time we got to this, you were in a, a, a bit more of, uh, of some haste. Uh, the strange curved little blade he wields is rather interesting. Uh, but you would be collecting quite a few little weapons between him and the ones that Giggles had dropped. Both the gnomes, Kukri, and Giggles, hand crossbow, and, or, uh, sorry, regular crossbow and flail. The hand crossbow would be something that you'd gotten from Gadrin. <laughs> uh, but with that removed, this whole area down here has a whole lot of large pointy <laughs> objects, pitchforks, and the like, that you can't carry all of them, and you can't really take them all out of here, but you can take the more dangerous the actual, the actual weapons. weapons of war away. As you're dealing with that, Floblin is dipping off into an alleyway here, just trying to kind of remove himself from the situation, trying to go somewhere where he's not going to be blamed for, uh, you know, bad things that are going to happen. I guess when you grow up as, a, like, on, well, it wasn't, didn't grow up as an on-fire goblin. You just grew up as a red goblin and became an on-fire goblin. You get used to people not really... Giving you the benefit of the doubt. So it's, it's not on the outside that counts. <laughs> so you're dipping into some alleys mm-hmm. here on the West Dock. Uh, what, are you heading any particular direction or just trying to get out of sight as quick as possible? Well, I'm going to try and stay near the area of the Fortune Tower place, but I'm trying to just keep out of sight and see if, while I'm you know rummaging around in the alleyways, if I can spot anything out of the ordinary other than, well, the mad chaos that is going on and see if maybe I can... Uh, I don't know, find some things in between. Rooting around, trying to find the darkest, secludedest alley that you can to get out of sight, trying to find anything possibly useful. Uh, As you look through some things, you hear above you a small little clatter. Uh, It almost sounds like a wooden, like a series of wooden handles just gently tapping on the side of the building. Growing up in Corvosa and the kind of situation that you do, it's not something that is super uncommon to you. Uh, You would recognize some of the unpleasantly large denizens that kind of lurk around the eaves and out of sight, especially as you move further into the alleys, further into the heart, uh, a little working way up a bit north in town towards where the shingles up above are more prominent. And looking up, you do in fact see the dark body of a spider about the size of a man's open palm. Uh, It's thorax, smooth, near spherical, with spindly little legs coming out on each side. Unfortunately, as a small goblin, you're not a ton bigger than them. And you know, they are not really very friendly creatures, these drain spiders. Well, uh, uh, hopefully it didn't notice me yet. Give me a stealth roll. Giant spiders. I think I'm going to go ahead and try our new system out. <laughs> <laughs> Two cards into the deck. Better. What'd you roll? It? Like a five? Uh, yeah, it was like a five. and <laughs> I saw one digit. It didn't yeah, look so great. So that's a 21 altogether. Uh, with a 21, looking up hidden as you are, uh, fortunately, there seem to be a decent uh, amount of fires throughout the city, and you're pretty able to kind of smother your hair with some random dirt and garbage here to, to blend in. Uh, the bits of smoke, if anything, you've learned being somewhat distracting to these creatures. Uh, it's lurking up above, under the eave of the building, maybe 15 feet above you. Like, uh, next to a two-story building here in this alleyway with who knows how much more built up on the shingles atop it. But it doesn't appear to have noticed you directly. It's just right up there above you. 
uh, on its own little hunt through the alleys this evening. I see. Well, I'm going to keep being as sneaky as possible and just get out of uh, the perimeter where he's at and then just continue on forward as quietly as I can. Try not to draw any attention. Move away from angry <laughs> spider. Giant spider. Normally I would just say burn it with fire, but not today. <laughs> uh, Arden, as you make your way over through the streets, uh, it's directly west away from the Jigare River where you saw this hippogriff crash. And as you kind of wind your way through, uh, as the day was winding down, there weren't a ton of people out here in the roads. And though there are some very upset citizens of Corvosa around, it's not like the streets of the city are absolutely thronged with rioters. You can move about fairly easily. Um, and besides, many of these people that are out here very incensed are moving much the same direction as the way that you're going is leading you towards Castle Corvosa. Uh, but as you come around a corner into where you can see this small plaza where this hippogriff and their rider had crashed, you can see that there is a bit of a crowd, maybe a dozen people gathered around where they had landed. Uh, you can see from the sprawling shape of the hippogriff what you could probably have guessed from the way it impacted. It doesn't look like it survived the crash, but through the crowd, there's not much you can see of its rider. Uh, you can see that these people are elbowing and pushing past each other to get into uh, the front here and several of them making off away with little bits of armor, handfuls of coins, one scampering off with a uh, with a Sable Company sword in its scabbard pilfering what they can grab. Um, uh, Ar Ar Arden will kind of s stick to the shadows. Um, he's he's more looking to to try to help any of the the guard that may have fallen and and maybe hurt. He doesn't he doesn't really care so much about the stuff, but but you know the people the people can't be replaced. You can you can steal all their stuff, but th the sable company is a sable company. And if you wait back there, just kind of watching, like a swarm of flies will descend, take their fill. And after not much more than a minute, this little crowd would have dispersed, uh, leaving clearly visible there against the wall the shattered remains of this hippogriff and its rider. The rider having been stripped of his weapons, all of his armor, the barding having, having been pulled from the hippogriff, uh, left there basically in his small clothes with an empty satchel haphazardly just cast aside on the ground beside him. Uh, he... From this distance, you, I mean, you can't tell for certain, but the odds the writers survived are not looking great. He'll 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 make his way over. Make me a medicine check. Um, I'm just gonna try to stabilize him. Oh, you well. Okay, fair. You can absolutely just uh, you know, you know care can't stabilize either way. Uh, walking up and what are you what, what are you doing then? Sorry, go ahead. Continue here. Uh, Arden is kind of he's 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 kind of like a like a little mouse he's kind of like scurrying up and he'll he'll get beside him and he'll put his hands over and and sedimentus 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 and he'll whisper and 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 green energy will kind of flow up from the earth and and try to envelop him and see if it if it gets into his lungs and makes him his his chest rise as you cast this spell into him uh, he's completely motionless on the ground, slicked with a mixture of his own and his mount's blood. Uh, you feel your magic reach into his body, but just find no purchase. Uh, that impact, for what small fortune it may be, uh, very likely killed him instantly as well. In Dwarvish, uh, he'll say a prayer for him. Uh consigning him to whatever lord and afterlife uh, he believed in. And uh, he'll go down and see if he can find anyone else that might be hurt that he can help. John, you move away from the fishery to the south, heading back towards the building where you had met uh, with the fortune teller previously, where you had been 
set upon this path in the first place by uh, Massilia. And uh, as you move through the streets down here, there's not a whole lot of crowds further south of West Pier. Uh, most of the people that have taken up arms that have taken to the streets again are moving towards Castle Corvosa or uh, towards like center, uh, more central meeting places and market squares. And this is sort of a way from that. So it thins out a bit as you move. Uh, you would be definitely moving towards the emptiest part of the town uh, at, at the current moment, uh, but one that is not completely devoid of people. Some folk are still uh, trying to hurry back towards their homes. Some are, ma some are making their way up from the south. A scant few are headed the same direction. Uh, but one man kind of catches your gaze as you make it about half of the way back down towards uh, Basilia's home slash fortune telling shop. Uh, he looks to be fairly old, uh, haggard, unkempt hair, kind of clinging to the sides and back of his head where it's forsaken the top, hunched over, uh, his hands almost seemingly permanently gnarled into near claw-like shapes as he totters about the street sort of aimlessly, like he doesn't know where he is or where he's going. Uh, everyone passing him by, catching his gaze for a brief moment as he uh, takes a couple staggering steps towards them or says something and uh, he turns to look up the road and sees you approaching calls out the eye of Grotus is turned from the boneyard to the city of Corvosa it heralds our doom and starts to stagger towards you pointing your direction <laughs> you just said a whole bunch of words that I don't understand at all you y you the eye of Grotus you you will near death during a time of great sickness. Your end will come to Corvosa's darkest hour. Your peril ushering in a new age of darkness for all of Varicia. And uh, as he comes close, his face is gaunt and he, he does not look physically well. And he's staggering towards you, uh, like kind of picking up some speed here. Uh, still reaching out with this, this like pointing, almost accusatory gesture towards you, sort of wild-eyed. Like, excuse me, so do you? Do I know you? And is... As he comes up, he, he physically like goes to grab at you. Take a step back. Um, who are you? What's your four DC? Okay, do oh, it. Oh boy. Four DC is nineteen. He's gonna get an eighteen. And as he kind of like reaches and grabs out at you, you step back from this. He is, he is very much, he, he is locked on, fixated with you. And whatever he is ranting about, these words are like meaningless to you. He looks like he is clearly beyond sanity in this, in this moment, but he's not breaking away. He's going to pull out a copper piece and just kind of toss it to him. <laughs> you, you, tossing this copper. He doesn't even look down at it as his coin kind just bounces off his chest. He keeps like reaching out towards you. You don't understand. You must understand. You are the herald of Grotus. Unwitting or no, you bring this doom. Your heart be tied to that of the city and the lives of all of Varicia. And reaches out to you again. Oh He's God, just money doesn't work. Trying to grab. <laughs> But capitalism with, with is nine. powerless. With a nine. He's uh, kind of losing steam here a little bit. The Herald of... Is Grotus a god? Is he a devil? I, I, I don't have time for this. I'm sorry, sir. If, if, if you don't need my help with anything, I'm just gonna... I gotta go. You can, you can push past him fairly yeah, easily. Yeah. He's a pretty frail <laughs> old man who can just kind of go around and he sort of staggers after you for a bit before Same. losing interest and turning back to his ravings in the street to anyone who will listen uh, as you make it back to Basilia's home. Uh, Darren, where is your parents' house? Where would you be going? Is that is that something you need Corvo? Would you like a recommendation, or is that something that you, as the player, know enough about Corvo? Uh, answer and tell so you? I made a I, I made a decision on it when you showed me the map, and okay. I don't exactly remember the name of the district I picked. Is uh, it Highbridge? It's possible. Uh, so um, Darren uh, Darren's uh, father is actually a coppersmith. Uh, he worked he. He craft. He's a he's a tradesman. He makes uh, rakes and repairs, pots and pans, and uh, also some some alchemical work. Uh, makes some dock work pieces uh, that are resistant to to rust. 
Okay. Um, and so that's that's kind of how he makes his living. So he would be a a decent semi well off tradesman. Copper semi well off tradesman. It uh, it doesn't rust. Is he- how long has he lived in Corvosa? It oxidizes. <laughs> um, he's lived in Corvosa for... Um, like, how long has your family lived in Corvosa? Uh, probably for quite some time, actually. Uh, it's not just like he moved here. He's like generations. Yeah, yeah, no, no. He's been here a while. His great aunt is actually like native Varesian who like you know, told him old crazy stories and stuff. And so it's like he's 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 been around. He's, he, his family's been here a long time. Okay. Um, so it's very possible that... I would say most likely you would probably live in uh, Pillar Hill or High Bridge on the southern end of the city, uh, the southern end of the Midland district. Uh, High Bridge being the district where the like the Sable Company headquarters or the training facility and, and everything actually is down there. And need, they're both kind of near Citadel Bolshevik with the, uh, the Court of Elson Guard stand. Okay. Most of the like uh, most of the higher tier blacksmithing work, if he is decently well-established, is going to be commissioned by the city, uh, largely for the Sable Company or the Corvos and Guard. Uh, and it is those who are running their like, smaller private businesses that are like fixing pots and pans and things for people. So mm-hmm. whichever, and, and if you're that, if he's been here for some time and you're decently well-off, possibly more likely Pillar Hill, which is a little west of that and almost on the outskirts of Castle Corvosa itself. Uh, um, to the southern end. I, I'd probably say hybrid is probably good. Um, he, it's not like he's part of this like dynasty of coppersmiths or anything like yeah. that when he's well, kind of like dad not- my dad my dream is to join the sable company and fly up there he's like well okay son we're gonna chase that dream for you kind of yeah. thing well hybrid <laughs> that's why i say those two because neither of them are like super affluent districts okay. neither of them are even like nobility adjacent they're just not like the dumpster slums okay. that is old corvosa they are kind of the middle class general areas that or uh in blue. midland itself it's a very blue collar yeah, yeah, they're probably the, the blue collars. Midland itself, um, possibly even up towards Northbridge and Five Corners, but that, that's mostly like your your low rung politicians and uh, yeah, people Hybrid's who are working fine. more like municipal kind of mm-hmm. business. So, how'd be you? Hybrid you know, Highbridge. Yeah, we're going with Highbridge. So you're working your way down south as well. You would have taken off in the same direction. You would actually have run pretty much right past the fortune teller's place, um, heading down south on the main thoroughfare. He towards hybrid what did he see the doomsayer he ran he got he was he just booked it through there he was some crazy man screaming. dude focus. unlike Nothing you he's i probably know who that attention. guy is actually i'm like let me give old man uh, oh that's so greg don't yeah. worry <laughs> <laughs> going past the fortune teller's place like hmm yeah hmm well i wonder what that building is <laughs> possibly no it's not haunted or anything don't want but uh making your way down i did just say we were going to meet at the haunted house that literally is what happened <laughs> yeah i'm not sure why we did that you spooky because we make good decisions. We'd make good decisions. You booking it down this road um, would also find yourself much more in the clear. And you're following, you can follow the primary avenue. Uh, one of the most, uh, there's basically four roads that en- emanate out cardinally from Castle Corvosa. Cardinally from the castle, which is kind of askew. So you're like northeast, southeast, etc. cetera. Uh, and those wind their way through most of the core of central Corvosan, so uh, or central Corvosa itself. So the road that you're on would merge with Southeast Castle Road after a few hundred yards. Mm-hmm. Uh, in one of the largest plazas in the city. Here, you would come to your first in, uh, uh, view of the growing mob, uh, where there would be a large assembly of very unruly and upset townsfolk uh, wielding whatever tools or weapons or implements they could find, scattered torches throughout the crowd, facing down a, an, a line of Corvosan guard, uh, woefully unprepared for civil unrest such as this, uh, standing shoulder to shoulder as well as they can, their narrow kite shields not really lending themselves to your kind of Spartan interlocking wall, but blocking off where Southeast Castle Road proceeds directly towards Castle Corvosa. From here, you can look down that road and see the entire quarter mile stretch to the foot of the Citadel itself. Uh, and that is where the guards have drawn their line. A chant of Hang the bitch queen! Hang the bitch queen! Is uh, broken out from the crowd here. 
And as you go to move past this, a couple of those towards the back. Uh, obviously, you are, I imagine, in quite a hurry here. Yeah, yeah, I'm sprinting. How's uh, Darren dressed at the moment? Oh, like a, like a sable company train. I'm, I'm wearing my military uniform. You are yeah. in military uniform. I am, yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. And as you go, you would find yourself stopped by a couple of larger men and women who just sort of moved to put themselves in your way a little bit. Uh, some of their attention and ire turned your direction. Uh, I don't... That's a nice outfit you got I don't there. suppose you're <laughs> you're here to congratulate me for my service, are you? One of the men up in the front there who, uh, massive knob knows a dwarven man is pretty tall for a dwarf. Uh, what would be looming up to four and a half feet for him and nearly as wide as he is tall, built like a refrigerator. Hmm. Um, open wooden torch in one hand, nothing in his other one, uh, drawn about in dock workers leathers, quite simple. Looks up to, how tall is, it's probably up to you, you can't be that short. I know you're like 16, like, we've covered. How tall is Darren? He's really he, tall. Okay. Like, yeah, he's you, like, he's sprouted. You, uh, like you're not a super late bloomer or anything. No, right? no, he's like six foot two. Yeah, okay. He's like really he's tall. tall. Yes. <laughs> Look at, looking up to you holding this torch here. I forgot your chicken, boy. What are you doing out in the streets this late? Right. You don't look like a guard, and you look like you're very busy riding right now. I'm going to leave you to it. And they're, they're <laughs> kind of, as you say that, you realize sort of massing an almost secondary mob back here. The vast majority of people are still up chanting, hang the bitch queen at the yeah. line of Corvos and guards. But those stragglers in the back have started to turn their attention your direction. Oh, wait a minute, boy. Where are you going so fast? Ain't your business supposed to be at the castle? Long live the queen, aye? Right. Um, Darren's going to look around, and then he's going to run to a roof and just haul himself up on it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do down there? <laughs> Make me an athletics check. Are you good at these? I'm decent at them. Uh, that's 17. You're decent at them. 17. You kind of look for a break in this crowd and sort of move... Uh, Make take your opportunity to just bolt out uh, the short dash towards the edge of the square, jump up and grab an awning and pull yourself out of uh, out of view. And another one of the crowd, a uh, woman yells up after you, well, running from the prowlers of Corvosa, you can't do anything but protect the queen. And uh, some jeers and yells coming out from this crowd, your direction is a couple of rocks and Please file a complaint there. with the local garrison <laughs> and up your, your alderman will take it up at the neck. God. Uh, and uh, I'm going to just be on the rooftops for the rest of my journey. <laughs> <laughs> well, the shingles definitely don't extend this far south, but that doesn't stop you from a much more uh, traditional kind of clandestine hop across these. Uh, as long as you keep yourself out into the main burrows, the buildings are certainly close enough for you to fairly easily get a scramble across the top. And uh, free from the ramshackle mess that is the shingles itself, you don't have to worry about the chokers. So that's fine. I don't know what those are, and I hope I never find out. See? Good news, we're not in the shingles. Up Woo! Here. Uh, one thing he, I will be looking for, actually, is if there's, the like, chokers. a convenient laundry <laughs> line that's set up, maybe a sheet I can grab to kind of disguise my very obvious military uniform. Oh, oh I thought you were going to be a ghost. <laughs> you show up ten minutes early the next day with a sheet on? <laughs> I mean... Look at my disguise, everybody! <laughs> You're immediately on fire. <laughs> Your plan to meet up at the fortune tellers, was that going to be shortly or like in the morning? Let's uh, make sure the that my father's day. shop isn't burning down. I, I mean, I'll, I think I'll, we agreed on the morning. I think we agreed on the morning. We thought we thought we agreed on the morning. Last week, also. we didn't mention anything today, so I was double checking. I yeah, believe no. we said morning last week. I don't remember, but that's when we Reth just, would be showing up. I'm probably right. going to have to like report, if I'd we, imagine. We did say morning earlier, too. So. Yeah. I do not remember. I do. I, I, Plus, John doesn't forget. You have a smiley. Plus, I still haven't had any breakfast. <laughs> Darren, uh, as you would get down to your parents' shop, you would find this area of the town um, 
while everything, even those uh, inns and taverns that would normally be open at this hour have shuttered their doors mm-hmm. and windows, uh, there isn't any damage down here. Uh, this glow on the horizon seems to largely be centered around uh, the Castle Corvosa itself and largely far up in the north in Old Corvosa at Garrison Hill, it looks like. Out of sudden in the city, like these, nobody's coming to just... This is news that's only minutes and maybe hours old. This is not just leveled all of Corvosa <laughs> quite yet. Uh, you would find your establishment, their, their establishment shut, but intact. Uh, Floblin, you would be able to keep yourself relatively safe and concealed in the alleyways of the city here in Reth. Uh, what is your, uh, after you have dealt with Yargrin and Hookshanks, what is it, where are you going? Back to my house, but I gotta wait for Arden. I imagine you would, you would meet back up with Arden uh, fairly shortly after. Uh, much of the business and the mob throughout the eastern midland here uh, moving along trying to make it closer to the castle itself um, and I'm purposely tr- trying to avoid notice yeah and then you taking him back to your, you're both heading back to your house mm-hmm. uh, where do you live Beth? in North Point near five corners okay so that's also not super far from here just the other direction uh, I, I wrote that down that one. I wasn't gonna remember. Yeah, we, we we did go over obviously the uh, the map of Corvosa, but when you're you know not the game master, there's only so much setting information you can digest about an adventure that you haven't actually touched yet. So uh, that's that's fair. Uh, Five Corners would also be uh, now going the opposite direction that John and Darren had gone down this uh, side thoroughfare here that led up to the intersection uh, just past Northgate, one of the major mercantile districts of the area, one of like the mid class. Um, residential districts. You want to know why I chose it? Because it was on the list and it had a funny name? No. Why? It's close to the bridge to get the hell out of town. So That's also punt. fair. Yeah, it is close <laughs> to the, the primary gate. Uh, as you made your way into Five Corners, you can see North Gate from here. Uh, and normally at night, uh, the town Portcullis closes uh, in the main gateway at North and High Bridge. Uh, preventing wagons and caravans and large shipments from coming in and out. Individuals can still come and go through the gatehouses, of course, um, but after from sundown to sunup, that's the only access in and out from Corvosa to the mainland is the gatehouses on either side. Uh, but the port call is notably is still open. Or normally at this time of night, as I don't know if I said it was closed. I meant to say at this time of night, normally would be closed, and it's not. You, you can that. you can see that it is still yeah. up, uh, and it is it's a massive gatehouse, so it's clearly visible over the buildings of the North Gate District, uh, still illuminated by the torches that are uh, on the outside, usually quenched by now as well. But the rioting, similarly, has not really spread to Five Corners. It hasn't really damaged everything up here. The area itself all still looks to be intact save for the fact that everyone has shuttered their doors I, this, this 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 seems like a nice neighborhood well it ain't too bad suits my purposes nicely uh, gates a little concerning though uh, why well normally it's dark and gates closed and it's some ain't right I, obviously a lot of things ain't right but that ain't right uh, i'll help i'll help you defend your home i'm not too worried about defending the home i'm not exactly the only uh Hunter lives around here and tapping the gun. Definitely not the only one of these either. Having a pretty large gun would probably make it fairly easy to move through the streets too. I imagine <laughs> most of these like torch and shovel wielding commoners probably are like, oh, you have a nice day, sir. I'm going to go around <laughs> over there. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm clearly dressed as a, a normal commoner. I'm not wearing yeah, you're not sable, in, like, company sable company <laughs> outfit or anything. And I've you're got a gun. Mad at the government. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> But you two would make it back to walking Rest. past people like we will allow a revolution. That's how <laughs> John, uh, <laughs> after your ordeal, you make it back to uh, uh, Basilia's home. I cannot for the life of me remember her name, and I don't know why. I have it written on a paper right in front of me for this exact reason because I don't like every single time Basilia. You make it to Basilia's store. Um, where it uh, looks much like it did as you left it. Uh, notably, 
the windows, while they are still shuttered from the inside, uh, are not really like sealed. They're a little ajar, and the, the door is just kind of hanging a little loose in its frame, also, uh, slightly angled inward. I'm gonna knock on the door. Hello, is anyone in there? No response. Let's push it open and walk in. Inside, though you had only been here some scant few hours ago, the view is completely it ends with what you had seen earlier this afternoon. Uh, there are no brightly colored rugs and tapestries. No incense smolders in the holds, uh, in their uh, braziers. The inside is dark, unlit. And even in the threshold of the doorway here with what light leads in from the street, you can see that layer of dust near half an inch thick seems to lay across everything. It looks like nobody has been in here for weeks. That don't make a bit of sense. I don't understand anything that's happening in this city. Just ghosts. All of a sudden, this place looks like it hasn't been touched in weeks. Just I'm talking. He's talking to himself, ranting this entire time. Just walking around and looking. It's like, oh, inside. He's the, totally sane. Yeah, in the home. Yeah. Perfectly normal person. Yeah. <laughs> it turns out he got the wrong house. He's next door. <laughs> As you are we're, uh, looking around the inside here, uh, where you can see some of the furniture has been just sort of cast aside. A uh, set of drawers in the corner has clearly been rifled through by looters who were not very kind to the room. Uh, one of the drawers pulled out entirely and just cast aside, broken on the floor. Um, there is only one thing in the room that looks in any way recent or intact. And it is in the center of the dusty table with only two chairs sat around it, both sagging and forgotten. One single face down arrow card. Oh, now you're haunted. <laughs> now I'm haunted. Flipping it over, you see again the keep. Uh, the same card that you had found that had guided you here in the first place. The writing from its back, gone. No signs that it had ever had any alterations. You know, it would have become nice to actually have met you in person instead of just talking to you ghosts. Um, well, John, I'm very riled up and very energetic. I have nothing better to do with my night. He's just going to take off his armor, set it down somewhere, just kind of grab out an empty rag and just start kind of dusting stuff off and cleaning up the place. <laughs> like, I have nowhere to go. I have no, I have no John's end to sleep at. John's staying in the spooky ghost Yeah, house. John's staying. Might as well make it presentable. Might as well, <laughs> might as well clean it up for We're going to have a nicer spooky ghost yes. house. Uh, so, <clears throat> Floblin. I Honestly, your night is probably the most normal of anyone's. That's this that's is, frightening, sir. Well, as far as you're concerned, this is you just you're doing what you do every day, skulking about back alleys and eating garbage. Uh, <laughs> day. What are you looking for? What are you after? Where do you go when you do eventually feel safe and? Do you have a place that you return to tuck in for the night or whatever dumpster looks com more most comfortable? <laughs> the city well. was dying. <laughs> they were chanting for the head of the queen, but for me, it was a toil day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, well, after I, you know, lied low long enough and I feel like the chaos is dying down just enough, just enough for that me That is to not the direction the chaos is going. <laughs> yes. Well. As you uh, <laughs> spend some time back in the hours... The alarm bells would stop ringing maybe a half hour later throughout the city, but oh. you would still hear the clamor of steel and the shouting of oh. the mob for hours. In that case. Uh, if anything, it only seemed to be intensifying. Well, in that case, um, I'll probably be, uh, after I, you know, had a quick snack and then, you know, just... And some giggling. Someone's cackling. In the Apparently. Um, having a great time rioting. Well, the queen. <laughs> <laughs> it might be. Um, so what I'm thinking I'm going to do is, uh, 
Well, if, if I feel like I'm safe enough, I'm going to try and find the nearest dumpster to uh, the fortune teller's house, and that's where I'm going to stay for the night. Make your way back over, climb into a nice metal trash can, and wait till this all blows over. Um, I, I, hey, 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 um, um, I'm, I'm counting, I'm counting the cards, and I'm counting the cards, and I'm looking through the cards, and uh, the cards were all there, and uh, now they're not. D- do you want to explain to me why that's true? Oh, yeah, I would assume it's haunted. What do, what do you what do you mean? What do you mean? They're just they're just cards. They're really nice cards. I mean, I like them. They kind of speak to me a little. But I why, why why should there be one less card than there usually is? Because it's haunted. It's a ghost. The one character in the horror movie with any sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's a ghost. It's gonna do what it wants to do. I can't do. I have a gun, not a ghost. I, I don't. I don't have answers. I have a gun. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have answers. I have a gun. <laughs> the tagline of every gunslinger. <laughs> Put that on a t-shirt and wear it. Shame. So. <laughs> anyway, what's the CR for this fight? <laughs> I gotta, there's actually large bore modifications for guns. <laughs> so, what's the CR? Oh, it's above a ten. Bigger gun. <laughs> Same gun, bigger barrel. You like um, the Elmer Fudd shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess I will... Knowledge religion. Is this something I think that a ghost might do? Because <laughs> if it's... I don't think that's a knowledge religion. I don't think that you have never encountered a ghost. I Correct. Mean, have I you, heard stories of this kind of stuff? You've heard stories of all kinds of stuff happening throughout Corvosa. There are a great number of... Uh, People, uh, how many freaking SCP stories have you actually read on the internet? Now translate that to living in Corvosa, and probably you've heard something similar. Yeah, there are a great number of stories out there. Um, but as yep. you're having this conversation, oh. Reth, what's your, uh, like, what, what is your, your house? How do you live? Where are you and Arden heading back to? Probably just a, um, nothing super fancy. Two stories, but not a large two-story house more like kind of like how two-story apartments are set up and he lives on the upper half of it so he has his own area own location just in a house that used to be a shop and it got turned into two separate houses no, nothing enough. huge but it's, it's not bad it's not terrible no all of you throughout the city I'm still hearing what I told Floblin. It is, uh, it's not getting worse. Or not getting better. It's definitely getting worse. And those of you that were further from the epi- epicenter of it, places that were safer initially, um, as hours pass and the night starts to wear on, are only hearing more of these riotous cries and this clamor of metal. Um, you Arden? would occasionally hear the wing beats of hippogriffs overhead as more Sable Company are recalled in from a field uh, all, all exclusively flying directly to Castle Corvosa. Um, I, I, I feel like, I feel like, uh, I really, I don't, I don't want to leave here right now. Uh, do you, is there a, a place where we can hide in this, in this house? Because they could, they could come for us. They could take us. You know, they could, they, they, they could come take us and and Ar- take us away. Arden. We have the stairs. Why are we gonna hide when if someone wants to come up the stairs, I just shoot them. <laughs> I don't have answers. <laughs> Could, could could you could do that? I'm just gonna look at the gun and look at you. What if I fire this thing like seven times tonight at somebody? Yes, I can do that. <laughs> I don't like it. Nuzzle up a little closer to you and say, "Okay." Well, if you really need to hide, you can stay in the bedroom. He'll dart up to the bedrooms. <laughs> so, Darren, uh, same question. What is your parents' shop looking like here? So the uh, the shop is is pretty um, pretty decently stocked and appointed. Um, he does do a lot of contract work, um, and you know even though uh, like you know pots and pans and things like that seem simple, um, you need to cook. When the sable company has a kitchen, they need to cook too. The guard have a kitchen, they need to cook too. So um, you know even though he works on that, he does do like a lot of just, like simple crafts that are just you know you don't generally think about it. He's not like Someone has to make smith. that. He's, He's not, not an armor smith. Swords. No, yeah. no, he makes like day to day utility. Pieces. I would imagine the vast majority of blacksmiths throughout Corvosa are doing things like that, or either making making and repairing tools mm-hmm. 
um, whether it is cooking implements or simple things like hammers, shovels, knives, etc., or our farriers. Yeah. Um, would probably be eighty five percent of smiths throughout the city. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean like there's there's way more commerce in Corvosa than war yeah. has to make the nails. And <laughs> even most yeah, even most of the armor and weapons at the Corvosa Garden of Sable Company use are probably imported. A lot of them aren't even manufactured within Corvosa itself. Hmm. Um, some would be, but the demand of the guard for a city this size is going to with how fast Corvosa has grown is something that would certainly have outpaced the supply of skilled blacksmiths uh, who would mostly be kept on retainer to maintain and repair them rather than to create them in the first place mm. so um, yeah that, that's basically what it is uh, the shop is shuttered and closed um, he wants to make sure that his dad isn't doing something dumb like joining the riot <laughs> if at all possible he's He's kind of get. He's he's a bit older, so you know. He hopefully he's past that point in his life. Uh, so All right, Facebook hasn't been invented yet. So yeah. <laughs> he's not gonna be lost in the rabbit hole. All right, all right. Um, but um, he's just gonna check on his family and make sure that they're they're okay and they're safe. Um, and then he's gonna have to go go report to his. Um, and I don't know if the trainees are gonna be given riot shields and sent out there. Uh, I don't know, but I mean. He he joined up, so he's going to show up. So ensuring that your family is in fact safe, and they are. Um, moving immediately down to the Sable Company training grounds where you would normally report, uh, you would find that the mob, as upset as they were with you, has either not yet had the idea or not yet had the balls to come directly to the place where the military people live. Okay. Um, so <laughs> there, is a, there is some still level of order uh, around Western High Bridge where the Sable Company training facilities are almost in the Pillar Hill. But there would also not be many people around. Um, at this time of night, traditionally there would not be much going on here. I mean, this is a recruit facility and uh, like basic boot camp kind mm -hmm. of place. Uh, their training when they are not on heavy recruitment is usually not going in through the night if they're not doing any kind of like special operations. Uh, but you would be able to go in uh, to the reception like they normally would have where there would be far fewer staff on retainer than they usually are. In fact, there would just be one single man sat at the desk. Uh, who is one of the secretaries. It's not one of the ones who would usually be running operations uh, at the front and designating where you're reporting what you're doing. Uh, as he kind of looks up at you, uh, Darren? Y yes, sir. What are you doing here? I, the city's in chaos. I thought I should come by just in case. Uh, well, I'm trained, I, uh, training operations at spent it obviously they can indefinite hiatus as far as we can tell I'm one of the only ones here as I mean if the trainees been deployed anywhere or I don't have the time to deal with trainees uh, they've been sent out uh, as a matter of fact you you can't stay here uh, barracks are closed for now until the situation is under control the sable company has to focus all their resources on uh, protecting the castle with the guard doing oh. what they can it's I I yeah, I, I, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, that uh, understands. His face kind of falls a bit. Yeah. Um, I, I guess if, I guess if you don't need any help with anything, and you, you can tell as you're, as you're looking at this guy here, and you you've you usually would not like work directly with any of these people, so mm -hmm. he would have your name from like the fact that you show up on papers and you're here, but he's not someone you might very possibly be somebody you've never actually talked to before. But he's not like rude about this. You can see your response to this, and he kind of sighs. I, I I don't know what to tell you, Darren. Do you, uh, your heart's in the right place, clearly. I, I uh, If my word meant anything, this is something I'd definitely run up to your superiors, but I mean, they're not here either. Uh, of Everyone's course. deployed. Um, I, well, I can't just do nothing. Um, there's some fires in the city. Um, I'll see what I can do about that. Darren. Maybe take the them. The whole of the Corvosan Guard and the Sable Company is out tonight. I've, uh, I've... I got here maybe 20, 30 minutes ago, but I've seen what was forming in the streets. I... 
You got a home. You got a family. This, this is the fight you have to fight right now. I, I guess not, but I, I don't know. I still feel I should, though. I don't know if that makes any sense. Look, you're... I, I, I've seen your records. You're not on board yet. You're an aspirant. And I, I, you've been really pushing for this for some time. I've... Go home, Darren. Go home. Get some sleep. Wait for the city to calm down. And then check back in tomorrow. And hopefully things will be back to normal. Uh, yes, sir. Um, you got a cloak I could borrow for the night? It's not exactly safe to wear the uniform out. Quartermaster's out, so I don't have anything I can uh, officially give you. But yeah, hold on a minute. And he uh, he stands up and heads back into uh, the back room and pulls out uh, what would be a very simple, just like gray traveling cloak. It's got the city symbol of Corvosa on the back. But it yep. doesn't have any of the Sable Company coloration or their logos or anything. Turn it inside out. Yeah, it's like a like cool leather jacket. <laughs> yes. I mean, realistically, like have. any courier could even be wearing one of those. It wouldn't yeah, it, it doesn't. Like, it ties you to, it like, It could be any municipal. government employee <laughs> <laughs> in the anti-government <laughs> riot. Or you could just be repping your city. I don't think that the average citizen is going to beat the mailman they see every day. <laughs> Yeah. Weird things happen in riots. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Letter but, carriers are always the first to take it in the teeth. It would be easy enough for you to invert and just be a humble gray cloak that you could draw about yourself and uh, meant largely for rains definitely would obscure your attire. All right. Uh, well, stay safe then. You too. And uh, he'll leave. All of you... Whoever you return for the night would find little that you could really contribute or obviously nothing you can really do for this. John's cleaning up Basilia's shop. Uh, Darren, Wrath back to their homes, flobbling back to his trash can behind the pizza hut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to sleep on in like the main living area with my gun across my lap. Like old man in a rocking chair with a gun on his lap. That kind of stereotype. <laughs> Through, I was like, "Come on inside, boys." <laughs> <laughs> and so, are are you all sleeping at some point? I mean, it's yeah. been yep. certainly an incredibly eventful day with the events of the fishery, and especially those who have taken some injuries. I am sure eventually would be very heavily warding off exhaustion and have really no choice. Um, you like to say something? John? I'm going to sleep as soon as everything hits me, and that adrenaline. You just down. literally pass out on an old abandoned. Mm -hmm. You just pass out of Basilius bed in the back my, of the shop. Pop myself up against the door so no one can come in without me waking up. I just scoot all the dust together into a <laughs> pillow. <laughs> oh God! So, oh. That and I'm poor and I can't afford to sleep in an inn. Who needs an inn when there's uh, abandoned buildings? <laughs> haunted, haunted, haunted buildings. You abandoned, even have, haunted you buildings. Have company probably. The it, ghost will protect you. It, it, Anyone it, comes out, they're going to get the Basilia backhand. So. Supposedly. <laughs> supposedly. If, if you That's ever, negative energy. You don't want that. No, yeah. you don't. I'll read your fortune. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be bad. <laughs> it's all the bad cards. Oh. If, 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 <laughs> Aggressively harrowing. <laughs> <laughs> your fortune says you're spooked. But... If he has a closet, that's where I am. If he doesn't have a closet, if he has a bed, I'm under that. I'm 100% positive that there's at least one closet in the house. That's where I am. You would all awaken the following morning to uh, what would at first sound a day as normal as any. Falling asleep to the sounds of shouting and rioting with the night past. It seems like so too as the worst of the chaos. But as you awaken from your rocking chair in the living room or your trash bin uh, or your seat behind the door, looking out into the city, things are not as peaceful as it seems. Uh, while the rioting seems to have reached some degree 
of uh, parody, almost a stalemate, you would be able to see that this has moved forth from the panicked anarchy of the previous night to a debatably calmer but much larger movement. The main market squares, all four angles of Castle Road, would be thronged with protesting mobs, uh, all still calling for the Queen's Head. Looking out to the mouth of the Jagari River into the harbor, you would see dozens of ships choking the entryway to uh, Corvosa's docks. Many of them sailing away from the city, holds still full. No proper way to get in and deal their goods. Moving out after your mornings into the streets, well, what are you doing moving out of the streets? Dumpster goblin. Well, after I stretch a little bit and do my, you know, daily prayer to the bike, you know, burning things and screaming goblin obscenities, I figured, uh, since I'm already close by the fortune teller's house, I go ahead and go inside and wait for the others. And, uh, I imagine John is sleeping against the door here. He's all right. He, w- he wakes up with first light. You're, uh, I was gonna say, you're probably up, but you're still in there, right? Yeah, I'm still in there just eating troll rations. Just... The door opens to your favorite person. Oh, hello, John. That's two of them on for this. Good morning, Floblin. Am I the first one back? Oh, looks was, around small room. You was the second one here, but the first one this morning, yes. Oh, well, in that case, <clears throat> he starts digging into his pouch. I found some bread. Don't mind the mold. No, well, thank you. Do me a favor. I just pull out a candle and just kind of light the wick on his hair. Hi. Set it down. That's better. I could. You could have just asked. Uh, Darren. <clears throat> in a world before uh, real access to refrigeration, uh, there would be uh, some stock of food. Of course, salted meats exist and things that don't turn quickly. Uh, but generally. Shopping is something that happens a lot more regularly than it does in the modern era. So you go get your groceries and your food for the day, mm. if not maybe the week at best. Um, who is it that goes out and usually handles that? It'd probably be, um, let's see here. So his family, father uh, hand, father is the craftsman. Mom probably runs the business. Mom probably handles books and things like that. Um, household would probably be... There's an Auntie May. Well, he does have Aunt Maddie, but she's like great Aunt Maddie, who's like literally like the scraggly haired Varesian aunt who comes out of town to visit and tell creepy stories. Um, (laughs) She doesn't live with them normally. Thank God. Like that was like the in-laws that we couldn't handle. So is it your problem then? Yeah, it might be my problem. Well, what are you doing with your morning then after you've readied yourself, cleaned up? Are you heading straight to the fortune telling shop, or are you going to uh, do your normal grocery shopping for your family here before you head out? I think I'm going to do... I, I, I need to make sure they can eat. Uh, and it's not safe for them to be out. Um, I'm going to leave my uniform off, but I'm going to carry my weapons with me because it's not safe, per se. Uh, but I'll get my grocery bag, and... Um, <laughs> grocery bag with a parrying knife in the bag just in case. (laughs) (laughs) Ha ha! (laughs) You thought it was a cucumber, but... um... (laughs) One of those baguette has a sword in it. Um, And thankfully, because he's a local and he knows knows the people in the area and he's done this a lot, I actually know who the grocers are. Right. So I'm going to actually, like, go to their homes and see what the deal is and see like, hey, I know city's kind of in shambles right now, but uh, you need any help with anything? Maybe we can work something out. Uh, you would find heading over to their home at the, uh, the grocers, uh, most of their homes and their storefronts would be one 
building. It's mm-hmm. not going to, uh, in most cases, they're not going to, especially those who are running things, they're not going to go to work. They're going to live either in the back room or above it if they're affluent enough to have a second level on their house. Um, so it would, it would be the same structure either way. Uh, and, and heading down to the markets nearby to Highbridge and a little bit to the northern and kind of towards the middle of Bolshevik, uh, you would see that there is a fairly impressive crowd, uh, but it doesn't look like it's rioters. There's no torches and pitch- pitchforks. It is uh, just the usual uh, morning throng, but four or five times uh, the capacity. Hmm. Uh, getting into the marketplace, you would notice immediately uh, several signs that had been hastily prepared and either staked out in front of buildings or hung in windows. No bread, no milks, no cheeses. Mm. And looking through to some of these packed interiors, you can see that there are, in some of these cases, literally half a dozen people literally bidding for like the last three sacks of flour. Um, no toilet paper either, Supply huh? here appears to have come to a near immediate grinding halt. And uh, even from here, you can see, as the, the Jigar River and the docks and the harbors are, are not far from you, that the docks aren't so much empty as there is there's nothing happening. You kind of notice the missing ambience as you move through the city, but it's not until you really see the scene in the marketplace that you put it together that no ships are being unloaded. No ships are being loaded. There's basically no work happening all up West Dock. This keeps up. The city will starve. Riot will be happening in earnest. They can't... All right. All right. Um... I need to talk to. I need to talk to Donovan. Um, all right, so I'm gonna look for Donovan, who's the grocer. And I'm not trying to buy from him because it looks like he doesn't have anything left anymore. But he's been in this town a long time. He's a grocer. He knows people. I want to talk to him to see if he knows anything about. It. So basically, Darren is seeing all of the food is here. They're on the ships. We just need to get them off the ships into the city. But no one is unloading anything because apparently the longshoremen are all too busy riding. <laughs> So, something needs to happen. So, uh, you head back to, uh, and there would be a back entrance to uh, Donovan's shop here to his actual home. And, like, it would be the same building, but a back door. Mm-hmm. Uh, heading back there and knocking, Donovan is trying to deal with things up front. But his wife uh, would open the door for you. Huh? Uh, Darren. Smeralda. <sighs> Look. The city's gone crazy. I, I see what's going on here. You tell me this as you, clear as day. Look, you, you keep all of Donovan's books, just like my mother. Uh, do you do you know any of these ship captains? Do you know any of these people down here at the docks? We have to get that food off the ship so the city's going to go crazy. Uh, you, you ain't seen. You ain't heard. I Look, we sent Amon, uh, which you would know is her son. He's uh, 19, 20, a couple years your mm-hmm. senior. I sent Amon up to the docks to try to check things out this morning. The problem is no one's, you know, ships are getting in. I'll let uh, these ships all moored up here, the ones from yesterday. No one's left, no one's entered. All the stevedores up and quit, and the dockmasters have nowhere nowhere to be seen. Northgate didn't even close last night. This is crazy. All right. If you head Look, up we're, there, we're not, not too far. You can see from yourself. Uh, Amon tells me there's a throng of ships at the mouth of the river. They can't get in nor out. Half of them are turned around and taking their goods back to sell elsewhere. So we just need to get people... We just... The goods are there. They're on the ship. No one can unload them. No one can unload them? No one can get them to the docks. What's stopping them from getting to the docks? No one's working the locks. No one's working the bridge. Even if we got them off the docks, how do we get through the streets here? Hey... I hear West Docks slipping fast. It's fortunate that we're south enough that... I uh, would certainly spare the stories I heard through the morning. Amon, Amon knows how to run a stand, right? Uh, well, uh, yeah, of course, you can... What if we... We just need to get the food off the ships. Amon could sell them right there. People would come and buy it. We could keep the ships moving at least a little bit. Look, keep the food a little bit. Darren, you ain't hearing me. The ships in the uh, in the docks here, the ships that got in the river. They ain't got no food. They unloaded yesterday. <laughs> then what do they have? They have the they have the exports, they have the steel, 
the hides, uh, the rope that was all meant to be shipped out. No, they were taking back it. their home ports. Oh my god, what a mess. I never studied any of this. <laughs> I've got some friends. Maybe they'll know something what to do. Look, this ain't the first... <laughs> Hell, this ain't even the first time that I and Donovan have lived through a curse the Crimson Throne grip in the town. This is not a fair sight worse than it usually is, truth be told. I weathered it before. I weathered it now. Well, I mean, what can we do, though? I mean, my... My right family now. will run out of food in a couple of days. Uh, and everyone else's family will as well. You keep stores for this, I imagine. Uh, normally, it don't... <laughs> it normally don't go much further than uh, a few days at worst. Maybe I'm just overreacting. Look, I know you're... You're an excitable young lad, and... You're, you're always looking for ways to help, Darren. It's, it's a brightness about you, it is. But <laughs> this is why... This is why we keep storerooms. All right. This is what the tack and the meat is for. Ah. Just. All right. And she and she kind of hits you. Says exactly the same thing I had told you last night. Just go home, Darren. This doesn't seem right, but all right. All right. Um. Thank you, Esmeralda. You take uh, care of yourself. Good. Good checking in. And, uh, Has everyone gone crazy? Is it just me? I'm, I'm, he's just going to kind of wander his way over to the fortune teller shop because this is blowing his mind. How about Arden and Reth? Do uh, merge ready for the morning? Well, the good news. I was ready for this one. About a month. You well, a prepper? <laughs> <laughs> Not so much a prepper as someone who's Prepared. dealt with this before yeah it's it's only been like 20 years since uh, which has been the longest stretch in the monarchy's history without this <laughs> happening but this is you've been through it before you can see what esmeralda does as well but uh, darren can't hear in his ear this is this is bad um but well it's not preparing ahead of time totally I, unique i would have had about enough food for myself for about a month but I reckon if I'm sharing it with people, maybe five, six days, you, you, if that, because I got other people around the neighborhood. Y you know, if, if if you need food, there's, I mean, I'm not really supposed to do this, but the the, the druids keep stores. We, we... Well, I can just hunt. That ain't no big deal. But, but what I mean to say is we, we do, we have places that, that, that we can go where, where we keep things. You can only find it if... You know, you know, druidic because we leave, we we leave signs everywhere. But if if we needed to go someplace where we could get something specific, I I, I can do that. I mean, if we need to. For now, we got everything we need here for at least a few days. I. But it is quite concerning, it, based on what I've seen in the past and what I've heard in stores. This is pretty aggressive. It ain't normally like this. Can't, can't, can the ships can't get in, right? I would assume that we can. From your position in Five Corners, you can see that. Yeah. Um, you can see up in the north section of the Jigari River where usually the day's exports are heading out and the imports are coming in and there are zero ships. We're seeing going. a whole lot of ships stopping and just leaving. No, that one's even getting to this point of the river because oh, they're like, they're coming bad. in. You can't see the mouth because the mouth is out past the Old Corvosa and Garrison oh, yeah, Hell, which is pretty large and obscuring. Snake. Right. Um, but you can see the part of the river where they're moving from the mouth to the docks. And there are some piers and docks in Old Corvosa, but most of them down in West Dock, south of you. You can normally see some ships moving around the Northgate and Northbridge, and there are none. No ships going either direction. So basically, there's still noises. The city is still acting, but the life of the city is not there. Basically, yeah, kind of, yeah that's, that's not terribly inaccurate. Is uh, what you would definitely see is you head outside, um, headed where? You headed right to the mm -hmm. fortune teller shop? Yep, waking up, getting ready, heading out. This you, is conversion on the way. Yeah, you would live not too far in five corners from one of Corvos's many banks. Uh, all run as many banks are throughout the world of Galarian in the name of Abadar. Uh, but the Bank of Abadar, which is a fairly large, imposing building, uh, flanked with massive marble pillars. It is as much uh, an act of deific obeisance itself as it is a functioning uh, commercial property, you would see that its huge wooden doors at the front are closed, and there is a literal 
gilded gate sealed across the front of it with out in front four massively armored knights wielding huge crossbows just standing in front of the gate watching the traffic moving by in the road and the roads so they're not like actively being harassed no okay. <laughs> no they're absolutely <laughs> not no I, like but, the building like the structure no one's really directly messing with it they're just there to make sure it stays there. right and, and these guys are in absolute full plate you cannot see one single part of any of them they look like four identical automatons uh, with nothing visible but an array of those small holes cut in their lower visor and they have like the slit vision on the front this huge heavy crossbow uh, in each of their hands as they make minor turns to watch the crowds passing by is really their only motion you, you know does the city does the the docks do they run on a lock system well, the only thing I know about the docks, honestly, is that boats come there. I <laughs> never go out there. It's the opposite direction of where I'm, my interests are. Uh, oh, I, I, I actually uh, the the locks the lock system uh, is 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 interesting. Um, I wonder if Darren knows anything about it because if we could if we could get that going, we might we might be able to get the ships in. I highly doubt that just a few of us are going to make much of a difference when the crews of 50 and 100 men are the ones needed to process this stuff every day. You can see the workers every morning and every evening. Group of people going out, group of people going in. Five, six of us ain't going to make a difference. We wouldn't even do one boat in a day. But, but people are going to get hungry. Oh, yeah. And they're going to learn real quick. They got to calm down, let the city run. We, That's just how it is. We, we, I, mm, I, the cards, yeah, we should go, we should go to the fortune teller shop. And the, uh, the group of you together, Darren probably, uh, after all this arriving next, and finally Reth and Arden making their way into the building, Good all morning. of you would see what John had seen last night, that the only disturbed, say, well, you've cleaned it up pretty well, actually, so it's not nearly as dusty. Uh, but you can clearly see broken bits of furniture, the shattered drawer of the cabinet, like this place, the, the tapestries and rugs are gone. Dang, There's... John, you just let out a bunch of stress or something? Oh, uh, I, I cleaned a lot, yes. It looked a lot worse when I got here. What? It looked like it hadn't been touched in weeks. You know, a common thing. It's a haunted house, I suppose. Ghosts do that kind of thing. I'm is, not really sure. Is that a common thing? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure? assuming so. Anything with a ghost is common, I guess. I, 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 sure. You I, haven't heard stories. I, I, apparently, I haven't heard a lot of things. Oh, this, we, uh, this city is is. I everyone's mean, taking this in such stride. This is terrible. Oh. Well, it's it's bad, but that's the way this city so runs. So, what's the uh, what's actually the situation? I have been inside this hut this entire time. Well, ships can't unload. Ships can't load. The the food that comes in and feeds the city like, is just not here. Can't say unload. And as, because there's no one to unload them. They're all rioting. As all five of you are in here discussing, and uh, as Arden literally like looking through the hero deck here, just uh, that pulling that out, you would see uh, one by one small embers catch a light in the sconces around the room. What? Why did we meet back up here? Well, this is the most logical place. This is the only place in town I really remember. And as they do, you can again... Start to feel that scent of incense as a smoky haze slowly starts to fill the this, area. This might as well happen, sure. Well, <laughs> of all the places we could have met, we did a good thing for the ghost. I'm sure this ain't going to be too bad. She's she's don't friendly. Why are you so... I got a question. Why are you so negative? This... The city's going crazy. It's not it my ha- city. I live here. It he lives here too, and look how calm he is. A lot more than you think. I, 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 maybe I'm just the crazy one. Everyone's taking oh. this in stride, but me. Hello. I do not blame him for his reactions. Truth be told, and as all you you look <laughs> over, Busley uh, is just sat in the seat before the table again. Uh, bereft of her cards, her hands now just kind of folded on the table in front of her, looking exactly as she had. He had met her before, but now kind of surrounded by the ruin of her of her old home. It's good to see you with your head attached. That was you a very unsightly sight. Found the truth, then. 
I apologize for deceiving you as I had, but I knew not the words, ironically, that tell you of the grisly fates I had found. I, I, I think you could have just led was, hello, I'm a ghost. I understand. Would you have responded well to that? I don't really know how I would have responded. I don't know how I'm responding to this. You're, I probably would have been a bit skeptical, to be honest. I don't think she had a choice. I think she's a slave of sorts to whatever happened to her. And well, she got her head removed from her body. The path that was set for her wasn't chosen by her, but I think she's following it as she can. You uh, speak some truth with those words. Admittedly, I feel a sense of clarity now, of understanding. Uh, Like I am finally able to see the world for what it is. Truth be told, though I recognize all of your faces, I remember near nothing of our first meeting, save that it happened. Hmm. And that of the cards that you were dealt. Speaking of, do you have my deck? I, I do. They... They feel alive in my hands all the time. I... Believe... That's, well, clearly I am the source of that. I can think now. I can understand. Uh, Whatever has happened, whatever states I now take here, whatever I am, it is in those very cards you now bear. I... Close your eyes really tightly. Desperately trying to think of something. Uh, Arden, Arden, Arden will very quickly start to, to deal something out and see if maybe revealing the cards might might help her have a thought. Because because oh, the cards might by talk the way, to her. I think you're missing one. There's nothing in your hand. It was right here in my pocket. What's the card that was left? Not anymore. It's, not anymore. Well, okay then. It's we're we're more weird as ghost scuff. Oh no. Maybe I am crazy. Maybe it was a dream. My will to this world could only be enacted through those very cards. And still, perhaps that may be true. I feel a peace. Which seems strange, given that which I can sense around us. A raging tempest of turmoil and anger. That which I told you at our last meeting, however long ago that was, I believe it all still to have been true. Your spirits are what I was able to reach for a reason. You have a powerful fate, a threat of which goes far beyond one single man in one fishery here in Corvosa. A fate of which may well be entwined with that of the city itself and perhaps even beyond I I feel something among you you bear a symbol a symbol of things to come a a symbol of the path before you so Uh, that reminds me Um, he'll take out uh, sand and he'll cast it before her What's the, what's the what's sand, the sand for? for? If she wants, if she wants to draw something in it, if it can help her, I, so I don't know. I have a question for you. Do you know what a Grutus is? A Grutus? Yes, yeah, some madman saying something about for the about the past that we take, that so we as a herald of Grutus, that we bring zooms to all that. Well, I bring zooms to all that I touch. This is a rambling madman. Got me thinking. What's the Grutus? It's maybe nothing more than that, but you have found something. Uh, It's something that was not here before. Something you have come across of Gadrin's, perhaps? An item to open the way to 
light the path of the future, the herald of the big sky. Uh, You're gonna have to remind me what we got from we <coughs> here. Uh, we got, we got, and, we got. Uh, as you as you reach the ring into your bag, um, the first thing that you grab and pull out is the brooch, which we had a great discussion in my Discord community about the pronunciation of, and it turns out it's actually either um, <laughs> the breachy. Everyone's right, and no one's satisfied. The brooch. <laughs> Can't brooch. The brooch. The brooch. The brooch. The, uh, the golden circle with the six gemstones set into it, the interlocking drake and the imp on either side of it. That's the first thing you grab and the first thing that you pull out. And immediately, Basidia's eyes lock onto it. Yes. This... This symbol, do, do none of you recognize it? Uh, not in particular. Are we supposed to? <laughs> it is an ancient symbol of Corvosa. Uh, one from before yours and, truth be told, my times. Uh, this, an icon, was given as a gift from the late king to his young wife. That brooch is the queen's. It, it, Il Iliosa or, or the other one? The, this is the queen's? How did Gadrin get his hands on it? That is a story I'm afraid that I am no longer able to find in my cards. Hmm. hmm. But it is interesting indeed, not only that he had it, but now that it has passed to you. An item of that surely fetches a great value. It's something a man like Gadrin would have sought to fence immediately. This even just for its make, for the very materials involved within its creation would be worth dozens, if not hundreds, of gold pieces. Well, he uh, had it wrapped up like a little keepsake. Uh, unless unless it's not unless it's not just a brooch, unless it's it it's something else to him. Well, I suspect the queen will probably be wanting it back. I suspect it's not unlikely that a reward would be provided for its return especially given the fate of the fair king. Uh, she would probably greatly appreciate a keepsake such as this being returned to her. Hmm. How... Hmm. How do you know that this is the queen's? Was there some public announcement about this, or...? Though I feel some... Fragments of my mind returning to me. Uh, again, I feel as if I'm able to express myself properly now to understand things that are happening around me. It's as if... It's as if anything before Gadrin is... is a blur, is a haze. It's like remembering a dream huh. from a night past. Just gonna chalk that one up to just her being a ghost. That's just gonna be my logical explanation for everything she says now. But Perhaps a very simple uh, requisite facet of my state. B Basilia, did, do you, do you think you could you could teach me about about the cards and and how to read them? Teach you. I think those cards themselves. Well, they are your cards now, and in your hands. They will serve as they should, as they must, in the only way that they can. And the it, it, reading that I performed for you on our first meeting will hopefully guide your fate, what power you are yet to possess to its conclusion. But that was the last reading I would deal of those cards. Now it falls simply to you. Is, is, is there anything we can do to set you free? Set me free? I have lived a life of divination, of reading that which the cards have dealt to me. I made my life, quite literally, on, on the very coin they brought in for me. What better fate could I have than seeing them on such an illustrious journey as that which they have foretold? Mm. In a time of great need, of mortal peril, I can give you at the very least this. 
A full harrowing is a complex art, one that takes months, if not years, to truly understand the meaning the cards present to you. But the truth of a single card can be laid bare quite simply. And if the whims of the deck are in your favor, fate will aid you. Through what power I can grant it. That, that's, that's nice. I've, I've never really had something behind me that, that, that was in my favor before. And she, uh, stands up from the desk, not pushing the chair up so much as kind of rising next to it. Uh, her movement eliciting not the slightest creak from the wood, as if she simply did not interact with anything present before you. Well then. Fates are far from immutable, but they do not enact themselves. So I believe there are a great many things left for you to do. What they are, I cannot tell you more than I already have. But I am glad to be a part of the journey. Huh. And uh, he steps around the table towards Arden and just reaches down and puts two fingers on the surface of the deck. And uh, as she does, she already starts to lose a bit of her form. You can start to see the wall and the sconces behind her through her flesh as she simply ceases to be. Uh, first, her head her, and her feet through her body. Last thing left, this hand laying on the deck as she vanishes entirely. Huh. Uh, that part's a little... Spooky. Unsettling. Yeah, it's scary. I would go with scary. That's, that's the part? That's the part you found unsettling? <laughs> well, well, the her being there versus the her not being there versus slowly fading out of existence. It's like, it's, it's the difference between standing there one minute, you're looking at the space, you turn around, you come back and Floblin's standing there versus <laughs> Floblin's standing there and he slowly discorporates in front of you. So I, this freaks you all out, but oh the yeah. city going crazy doesn't. That happens <laughs> every decade. That, this has been a very odd one to last as long as it has. You see, I'm just trying to process. I just don't really know how to Dar handle that information. Dar Darren? She, she, she didn't mean any harm. She's, she's a a good person and had good intentions. I, I, I don't, I don't blame her for and sending us off on a vengeance quest, even though she was dead. If she was alive, I would have taken it up. If she was dead, I, I guess I would have taken it up too. I did take it up. I didn't know she was dead, but I, she still so, needed the help. And Darren had, and 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 Darren, <laughs> I, I'm, Lamb had to go down yeah. anyway. Come here. Darren went Darren. down too. Darren, <laughs> are you okay? Is your family okay? They're fine for now. I don't know how they're going to eat in the next couple of days. They, 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 they have, they have enough food, and I right. have, the, I, I told him, but the, the druids, we, we keep, we keep stashes and, and stores at, at secret places Does, throughout, throughout the woods. If, if we really need food, I, I can get it for us. I'm gathering that this happens often enough in Corvosa that they prepare for this kind of situation, anyways. Hey. Why, why, why don't you sit down and and prepare? Is Everyone is telling word. me to do nothing. Everyone not, tells me that we're Darren? telling well, you not to do nothing. We're telling you to calm down and yeah. think. It's we, not so much doing nothing as not interacting with the problem. Wasted energy is wasted. You're doing nothing either way. Us individuals ain't gonna fix it, but we can still be productive and do other things while we wait for it to calm I, down. I think it's the first I, thing. I think we should take a look at this brooch. Yes, we figure out what to do with the brooch. You're going. You're going to be looking at. You're I, going to be looking at jewelry. Not okay. looking, no, figuring I, out what I, to do with. I, I think that we give it back to the queen. Yes. Then yeah. why? There How? we there. We thought How about do it. How do we do that? How do we do that? Why don't we wait for the rise to die down and then we'll give it to her? When will the rise die down? I don't know, I, but point, I think that family being fed is more important. At this point I of the morning, take care of that. It's not. It is not like pitches and uh, pitchforks and torches riots anymore. Like there are some protests, but. <laughs> Like, the, the violence at this point has largely stopped, at least the, the large-scale violence of the city. There is definitely still, like, pro protest groups around, but they are, like, protesting. They're not riotous mobs. Yes. The Corvosan guard Sink. aren't lining up to hold them back from the castle anymore. It's like... I think 
that in, the, it's workable now. Y- y- I know, think that in the, you need to st- accept the fact that this is happening. When you live out in a village where your entire food production of volunteers comes off as the, the production of the food that you grow, you have a bad winter, you have a bad crops, you have nothing to eat. People die. People starve. It's hard, but there's no point in working up yourself about it now. No? I hope I never get to the point where I'm okay with people starving to death. I'm not okay. It's just accepting. You, you, you know, if we, re- if we return this to the, to the queen, and I'm, I'm not saying that we should do it this second, but, but if we should, we, we would probably get a, a favor. So if we really want to think about something and we want to help the town and, and we want to help your family, per- perhaps we should think very carefully about what that favor should be. I'm sure that it won't take a royal favor to go and fix this issue and get my family through it or any of your families through it. I think we just, I just think we just. My, 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 my nephew's still missing and he, he could be dead. And at, at this point I've, I've had to accept that I, I may have to tell my, my brother that I, I've lost his eldest and I don't know how to do that. And I'm sorry, your your family may go hungry, but I don't think we're going to let that happen. But I do know that maybe, just maybe, if we take this brooch to the queen, we might be able to turn it into something that might might do some good. And maybe that will make up for it. Maybe his life will mean something. And maybe we can save your family and, and other families. Maybe. All right. All right, I'm 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 not so selfish. I'm going to say that that doesn't matter. Of course, of course. No, of course. Um I've had some training. I have a manual. I can try to gather food from the wilderness is, I, and I'm I, sure I can I, breath can guide we, us we, too. three entire chapters on riots <laughs> <laughs> you, when rioting the go home do nothing oh okay well, you, fair you, enough. Do, you, do, you do realize that I'm a druid and I, I live in the woods 100% of the time and I, I don't seem to be starving if, if, that, if we need food and wait, things that is on. not hard how's it 100% if you slept in my house well you told me to and there was, was a closet what do you like vampires? You'd be invited in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not rude. I mean, it, worst case scenario, I can it, teach you how to scavenge like I do. Don't listen to him. He eats garbage. I've seen the bread he brought in. It is all mold. Now, it's 100 percent mold. Hunt for a living. <laughs> like if you oh, need food. Besides, right. also your house is made of wood, which means it is it is it is automatically it's, inferior to a place made of stone. Which I would most certainly ask the stone's permission before I entered. So, my my house is made of wood. It's, it's so, very nice. The whole point is that we can help your family not starve. We we should also um yeah yeah we they, and, they're not going to starve and we should help we should help find your nephew as well. I, I yeah I mean I don't I don't I I don't know what to, what to think about that but I I'm starting to feel more comfortable with you and I think that we could work together and and we could help each other. And I'm starting to, to trust that you're a good person Let's and you don't want to hurt anybody. Thank you. And I think about it. This city is actually very poorly designed. Who puts the docks in the middle of the river? Oh, Where I've actually a- done a study on that. And, and believe it or not, it's actually quite idiotic and so it wasn't then, intended. Um, what would we take the brooch to return it to the queen? I, we can't just march up to the castle. Well, why not? That's where she is. I don't think they would let anyone just into the castle. Well, no, 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 we explain ourselves. Is that going to work? I would imagine that the door person would send us to the proper person to talk to, who would send us to the proper person to talk to. We might not even see the queen. And if we get accused of stealing the brooch in the first place. Well, we have a story for it. We also have one Gadron Lamb's body we can go retrieve. I, I, I think that's a little excessive. If we need to. We can tell him exactly where he is. You know, there is, um, I mean, we could always salt him to make sure he doesn't go bad. What? Well, I'm just saying we don't want him to rot. You can't bring a rotting corpse to see the queen. We're not going to bring a corpse at all to see the queen. But he just said he wanted to. I'm just saying that if you're going to bring a something. No, we're not taking the corpse. We're going to tell him where he is. So a guard can come bear. Walk up to the queen's house and knock on the door and come inside. She has people for this sort of thing. Castle Corvosa, I mean, you you probably wouldn't know this, but just for clarity's (laughs) sake, for the rest of the party who does live here, at least definitely Darren, Reth, and 
rubbing up bobbin. At least Darren and Red. <laughs> that uh, that Castle Corvosa is like it's a public building. Like you, it's it's a massive citadel and center for a whole lot of business in the city. That's that's higher level. It's um, not a keep. Yeah, it's not it's not a keep. Citadel Volshenik is the is the keep. That's what like the Corvosa and Guard are. This is like a palace, yeah. um, and large parts of it are in fact generally public. Like you can just walk into Castle Corvosa. You need to have business um, to go into anything other than just like the outer reaches and the grounds around it. Uh, but they do even literally just have like guided tours you can just buy of the inside of the castle. So it is not, it, yeah, it's not a military keep. It he is, finds this hard as it believes. One, 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 does not, one does not simply walk in, into Castle Corvosa, but one should probably, you know. <sighs> no, that that's actually backwards. One can, as a matter of fact, walk into the castle. Yeah, as long as we have business there. That's absolutely. How odd. That is very odd. I'll... I should probably put my uniform on. It'll give us some extra... Maybe. I just don't know. Uh, if we're going there, I'm gonna leave the gun at home at the it's, very least. Kind of look down at the goblin. Uh, I was about to say, maybe I should just stay outside and... and the, no, uh, I think you should probably be with us. If they see a lone, fiery goblin, they might get the wrong idea. I mean, I'm better at hiding than you think I am. I believe it when I see it. The but that's the whole point. You won't see it. That's the, the whole point. I won't torch. see it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also feel that perhaps we should um, find a place to, to leave the other valuables so we don't bring them into the palace with us because that, I feel, will definitely get us accused of being thieves if we have this collection of all of this random stuff from people who we don't know who they are. If they search us, that would be bad. People are very suspicious in the woods, aren't idea. they? What I, if I, we take all of it and turn it in as stolen goods? Well, so that it's no longer our problem. Or you could just hide it in a dumpster. Well, no one looks there. That's not Except why you. either, because uh, we're just putting more work onto the people at the palace, and this probably isn't there. We should, if we're going to do something like that, we should go to the local constabulary first. Well, that's what I mean. We just give it to an authority figure, and then it's not our problem. Well, I mean, we can think about that first, but I think the brooch, we know where it needs yeah, to go. The brooch, definitely. Yeah, well, let's just go handle that. Yeah. yeah. The rest of it, we can just give to proper authorities. I, I think, I, I, let's store it someplace for now until we find out who to give it to, though, so we don't take it to the palace. I mean, are you a squirrel? Given, just, given Lamb's I mean, I disposition, I, I fear that, you know, if I, any I of these squirrels. former owners weren't royalty, uh, they, they like might not be alive either. anymore, given his reputation. I think no. the best place to store it is just in a bag. We just don't open the bags. They're not going to search our bags. Yeah. I mean, they might search our I, bags. I, they might search our I, bags. I can put it someplace. If you say the stone. No, no, no. Just just, just give it to me. Well, cheek, give it to cheek me. Cheek pouches. Oh. <laughs> is that a thing no, druids do? Squ squirrels don't like me. <laughs> I can see why. I just give me it. I, I don't I mean, the brooch is on the table. I'm the brooch is right there. Uh, no, no, well, no, no, not, not the brooch. The, the other stuff. Oh, all the other stuff. She doesn't want us to be accused of stealing the stuff. So. Fair enough. I, yeah. We found it. Well, if, if you if you if you want it, just there, just squirrel it away or stone it away or uh, whatever. You, you, you have a very interesting idea of how stones work. I'm gonna have to give you some geometry education. No, 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 that's okay. It's all right. Geometry. 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 No, geometry. Geo. Geometry. Geo and elementary. Geometry. Exactly. Geometry. Geo. Exactly. It's elementary. It's elementary geomancy or whatever the heck she's it, trying to what, say. What, 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 what he said. Anyway, what are you doing with all this stuff? Um, he'll uh, take it uh, outside of town. You say that the drawbridge is still open? The, the oh, you are leaving. Oh. You're oh, going really? to go bury you it in the wilderness? Going several miles. Okay, so I thought you were doing it's something. It's not story. like we're not cutting the year several miles outside of town right now. Yeah. I thought you were doing something. The like backstory that. says raised by dwarves. It's actually raised by squirrels. <laughs> Because what, what, these I, I wasn't, are going to be I, put in tree trunks. I was not raised by dwarves. I was imprisoned with with dwarves. Well, what are as you is, as you is, give Arden all this, he immediately, I guess, um, leaves, walks out the Leave door, grabs him by the cloak, and just. <laughs> where are you going? I, I'm gonna go put it someplace where no one will find it for the moment. You know, I have a house, right? You know, he has a house as well. Oh, do we want to hide the stolen property in one of your houses? It's not now? stolen. It's, it's rec recovered. Uh huh. Until you're accused this, of stealing it, and no one's gonna accuse no one's me gonna of excuse us anything. of stealing anything. So we just blame the goblin. What? 
Is, is there no need is, to blame because there's no crime that's, that's is, happened. Is, is, is the ground on in her floor made of, of dirt or wood or what? Uh, it is on West Dock. Her floor would probably be wood paneled, but then just the earth, uh, hard pack earth underneath that. Uh, <laughs> it would be broken up in some places with uh, some small amounts of the earth exposed. Okay. I mean, we okay. could even hide it here if we really want to. Uh... And he'll start uh, casting uh, a little, and he'll make a, a an indentation uh, in the dirt that he'll then make bigger, and he'll just bury it there and just put some wood on top of it. Raised by squirrels. Are, are all, is, is this normal? No. Hiding stuff in the ground? Yeah, if you want to hide it and you don't want it to be found. No, I just mean you. I don't know. Am I normal? I No. 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 <laughs> So then, I guess end. where I'm coming from, I'm normal oh, yes. to the palace. How the druids have to hide stolen valuables on the ground? We don't. We generally store food away, but I'm thinking that the concept is similar. So at this point, you're, you're making it's your not. way out of Basilia's <laughs> shop yeah. down. Uh, and the easiest way yeah. to get there from where you are is to cut through Slope, um, which is kind of the cultural center of the city. It's the eastern side of the main castle. You're sort of due east of it, so you're away from the primary thoroughfares. You have to go real out of your way to get to any of the castle roads. Uh, but Slope's home to a bunch of museums and libraries and is generally just kind of a nice uh, sort of upscale neighborhood. And it looks like, for the most part, uh, even with its proximity to the castle, it's largely okay. All of the businesses are closed for the moment because none of them are critical. It is a lot of, again, kind of cultural experience things, a uh, place where you can go get history or uh, learn about various facets of the city or even just really, really it's a large collection of libraries for the university not too far to the north. So that all is just shut at the moment uh, with the current state of the city. So you're walking through mostly emptier streets on the way down this way. Uh, there are a couple of smaller taverns and restaurants throughout that have opened their doors back up now that the torches and pitchforks rioting has come to an end. Uh, so you make your way through about halfway to the castle. Uh, when you're walking by warm smell of a pork stew and fresh baked bread rolling out of a nearby door and you hear a little voice from up above you. Uh, what did you did you put your gun? Did you leave your gun at Basilio's? Or are you bringing it? Or I know uh, so you don't want to bring I, it. I could bury it, it could for be you. Checked in. No. <laughs> <laughs> it could be checked in with the guards when we get there. Okay, so you have the only thing you're hiding is it, all the rest of the random loot from yeah, theaters. If I was gonna put it somewhere, it would be in a locked like. Room yeah, in not my just house. like lean it up against the wall no. and this is abandoned building. Like, no, that's walk probably in fine. Like, yeah. <laughs> Um, a strange, very high-pitched voice from above you. Whoa! So many shiny things. You got so many large shiny things. What is this? What is this big tube? And uh, a little pudgy, kind of fat-bodied, pale little devil with some big red bat wings and a scraggly little tail ending and a little fleshy pointed tip oh, kind okay. of flaps down. Okay, now that's weird. Not at all for a Corvo. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that would be weird to you and that would be weird to you. No, the I'm other just... three of us literally see You live in Corvosa. Day. Imps are a freaking nuisance. Like random imps is like seeing a stray cat. They are basically that's... everywhere. Um, and they're intelligent and they hate you. So it's exactly like seeing a stray cat. <laughs> <laughs> Except the cat has wings and can talk. Um, and this imp is kind of floating a couple feet up back above Hreth, looking at the gun. Uh, clearly kind of curious about it. And this imp is, is, is a pudgy little lad with a real fat head, almost the size of his torso. Uh, again, almost like a bobble-headed kind of uh, appearance as he wiggles his head back and forth as he flaps there looking at this little are, gun. Are, are you a god? So it's above me? It's it's a kind of like probably four feet above and out away from you. I don't I'm, feel like I, I see it immediately. You know, have a little fire up already. I'm like, oi, fly off now! Anyway, don't be oh, bugging us. Oh, spicy! And it flips back I up. Just throw it at, <laughs> <laughs> vaguely that way. You shouldn't throw fireballs at gods. He flaps back. It's up. not to god. It's a yeah, never mind. He flaps back up over the roof, and you hear some kind of giggling up there, and uh, four 
imps. See, now the gods are angry. Jump They're down not gods. over the roof, just kind of cackling around you. Oh. What a thing. I want the shiny tube. Give me the shiny tube. So I'm going to look and at him and I'm going to tell him, how about I give each of you a shiny coin and you leave me alone? You can. I mean, I could just burn them. And I'll, I'll reach into my <laughs> bag and pull out four silver. Are you seriously trying to bribe the imps? You know they have no short-term memory. What? Let's What's an imp? Take a break here real this... quick before we really get into what we are going to do with all these weird little imps floating around. <laughs> it sounds like that. <laughs> it looks oh, like geez. this thing just stole my, my We're going to stand up, stretch oh, they our legs. Like the queen. They sound Feel just like Flodlin. <laughs> Feel free to grab some snacks, <laughs> use the bathroom, top off your drinks. We'll be back in probably about 10, 12 minutes. Nope. Don't go too far, because when we return, we're taking a brooch to the castle, and there are some uh, impish shenanigans afoot here. I'm going to feel don't... real bad if I shoot an imp and it just becomes pink mist. Also, don't top you, off your bathroom you and pee an in your imp drink. and hit it, it's very possible it'll become pink mist. But this little horde of weird, flappy, pudgy morons here, that's the hook. Right now, be right back. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Before we dive further into this, our uh, Pathfinder Second Edition conversion of the <coughs> Curse of the Crimson Throne here, which I don't. We've rolled a couple. I was gonna say I literally don't know that we've rolled any checks yet today. Uh, there have been a couple. There have not been a ton. There, there was a, a stealth check. There was an there was escape the angry mob and an athletics. You had, a, you had a couple. There were a couple. A handful. Uh, I want to, as always, thank Paizo for sponsoring our show here, for letting us play this game on their channel, for making all of the stuff that we're doing, like this pocket edition with just the whole Curse of the Crimson Throne and this little fat little book here, um, as well as our other partners, Norse Foundry for all the dice, that we aren't really rolling because we're just RPing and having a good time and going bananas and there's not a whole lot of dice shenanigans but, that are happening too much today, but we'll get there. But we have our own two perception dice, we which is epic. Dice. We like also have the Malachi dice. dice. Nobody likes the Malachi dice. I like the Malachi dice. I, I don't. I would, like to, <laughs> I would like to remind you that the Malachi D20s sold out. I would like to remind that you. That has nothing to do with you. Know, it's a gemstone but it was, die. But it was they good sell timing. out sometimes. It was good timing. <laughs> That also, just happens. I had a really dumb thought earlier. Oh, that happens every day. Something new, please. Yes. Um, <laughs> because the dude got killed where like he was cut off at the ankles and oh. he fell under the goop. Oh, my God. I was like, I can still loot him because part of his body's here. <laughs> <laughs> Looks on a foot. RPG thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> Look at foot, retrieve flail. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Skyrim it up, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But also, uh, <laughs> Sirenscape, because not only uh, we, have, we have used their platform for the sound sets, for the background sound effects and everything for quite some time, but it's not until we got to run Curse of the Crimson Throne that I didn't have to do all the work to set them up because we have official ones and they have giggling imps on them and they make me happy. And we love it so much. Everything's easy. We only have to slightly modify them for all the stupid crap I'm doing for this adventure, which is a large amount of stupid crap, honestly. Um, but as we left off, the Griffin becoming a pain. A flock of four little red imps, and the Corvosan imps. Like the the art on this card here is pretty. It's a double. Like that's the the bestiary imp. These imps that flock around Corvosa don't super. I mean, they look more or less like that. They got little horns. They got wings. They're reddish. But it's, again, it's like a stray neighborhood cat that eats way too much. Like your Corvosan brand of nuisance imp. It's is... kind of like how India has a plague of monkeys that just live in the cities and are absolute nuisances. These aren't your that dad's sounds... imps. That's a thing. That is yes, totally a thing. It is actually. Sounds thing. horrible. Yeah, it is horrible. They are really that, this annoying. This does sound awful. Yeah, imagine yeah, straight like cats that, with but hands. It can fly and also talk. Yeah, okay, and, uh, lovely. And that's, then, yeah, I guess it's like India's monkey plague. Uh, I wish and it also was a has some degree of magic. Hmm. Uh, anybody who lives in Corvosa probably would have had to deal with some nuisance imps at some point in their life because they are just a freaking menace. And here, as we come back, we're going to deal with some nuisance imps because they're a freaking menace. Mm. Everyone's going to roll me some initiative for however you want to deal with these because they are coming down to be freaking annoying. Mm -hmm. Not bad. I think Rhett's got some coins oh, in his hot. hands. 
I've, I've like reaching into my bag telling them I'll give you guys coins to go screw off. Well, let's, let's get initiative here. So, Arden. Oh, uh, that's that's going to be a 24. Okay. Ref? Uh, that will be a 20. And Darren? Uh, 12. It's like a little square. does not like staying in this Slowly frame. reaching for crossbow. <laughs> John? Uh, 25. 25. Blaublin. 23. 23. We got the block of general 20s in here. And our flock of neighborhood imps. Three. One of the calico. That would be very hard for them to get a three. I like imagining the imps with cat patterns on them now. <laughs> 26. Oh, one of them. Defying expectation. They are, I expected them to be very fast. One. They are quick little buggers. That's absolutely a thing that they are. These aren't cats. <laughs> They're seagulls. <laughs> <laughs> one of them probably looks like one of my cats. He's 26 pounds. Yeah. That's very a good cat. <laughs> Possibly seagulls. That seems entirely possible. So they come down and this kind of cloud of them around you, and you know these things are a menace. Uh, it's oh yeah, I got some little imps. Here's some little imps. Oh, I see them on the map now. I like I like I've been looking over and there at the here's screen. Here's some little things that kind of look like imps because I only had two imp tokens. Um, there's our empty cloud there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the two on the side back here by Reth are going to descend down on them. Uh, one of them immediately reaching for the gun because he wants the big metal stick and he doesn't know what it is and he wants it. So he is going to attempt to disarm you uh, against your reflex DC. And his will. He can't disarm me. Why? I'm not wielding the gun. It's going to be functionally disarmed because like, I mean, it's like an attended item. So... It's it's your gun. It's not in your hands, but it's like slung across you. It's it's so not something he can just pick out of your pocket. That is legendary thievery, and that takes a minute. Yeah, he's definitely disarming. <laughs> that's, that's that's what I'm saying. Like he definitely has to disarm it from you. He can't just steal yeah. it. Um, so what is your? Even though it's not in your hand, what's your reflex DC? Uh, my reflex DC is twenty. Twenty. He got a four. Um, <laughs> so. Absolutely unsurprisingly, he is a dare tiny little menace. Probably um, hard to pick up. The thing is, the gun is almost certainly heavier than this fat little imp. So as he's just kind of reaching out and grabbing at it and it's strapped across you, he's just trying to get a hold and just yank this thing off of you. And again, he's catastrophically bad at it. Um, he is going to try again. And he is going to get, with the minus five, a four. <laughs> um, so, so he has... He's not even close to being an actual threat of this thing pulling your gun yeah. off of you and flying away. But it is grabbing at it and kind of trying. Uh, the other imp, as it comes down, uh, this one's a little slender. Its horns are super long, curling out so far they almost come all the way back into the sides of his own face. Uh, floats down sort of in front of you. Uh, it looks where your hand's going on your bag. I see the bag. Give me the bag. I want the bag. Ah. Uh, and uh, you hear an incantation of their devilish magic come out of his mouth, and I need you to make me a will save. Uh, that will be... That'll be a 10. A 10 is a regular failure. So as he casts his spell on you, the one that's there begging at the bag, it's not... So this is always the weird thing with, like, mental compulsion effects. It's not suggestion. It's not like he's not mind controlling you. But you see this little one. One of them's grabbing your gun being a nuisance. One of them's just kind of there looking at the bag like, gimme, 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 gimme. And he, he seems like a nice lad. He seems like a good <laughs> little well-intentioned imp. He's asking, I, mean, I was um, already doing yeah, that. You, he's not compelling you to do it. You are friendly to this imp. Yeah. And uh, like, I, mean, I was already reaching in the bag to pull out four silver. That's right. what I was going. You were like to, do. to make him go away. Yeah. Uh, but now you kind of like this imp. He's a cute little imp. He's he's a nice little guy. Uh, you you're, you're friendly to him. If something happened, you literally can't use any kind of hostile actions against him. But you you think that other imp there? He's a, he's a pretty nice. Little, he seems he's entertaining. He's, he seems polite. Yeah. <laughs> he's pretty all right. You let him go out with your daughter. 
Probably. Whoa. Probably. <laughs> yeah. No. Let's slow that down. Uh, Just want to talk to him. A little bit, maybe. Um, the other two come down on the front line here where we have John and Darren sort of up at the front of the group, and these two imps sort of flutter down, looking across you, trying to uh, find something. Um, one of them... What do you got on you, John? Um, Pointy things. So lot, many. A lot, a lot of, <laughs> other than 50 weapons. I got a scythe, a spear, five javelins, a short sword, and a sap. Well, you have other than 50 weapons. <laughs> and then a backpack that has all, everything inside of it, sword. Okay, this is going to be... I would say he's actively doing it. Probably also a bit against your reflex, DC. Um, it is going to be a 14. It's a failure. As he attempts to like flip over and around behind you and flip open your backpack. He's trying to get into your bag. Uh, he's going to try it again. There's nothing in there. I promise you, it's empty. Uh, for a 20. That succeeds. What's in your bag? Um, it's an adventurer's kit, so whatever's in the adventurer's kit, rope, provisions. I can tell you exactly. Tinderbox. Tinderbox. Uh, some, torches, some torches, rope. Uh, it has a bedroll, tin <laughs> things of chalk, a flint and steel, two trail rations. Flint and steel. A trail. rope, soap. Take the trail rations off. Five torches, and one water skin. So Bucket. as he, he soap. gets hit into your backpack, flapping behind you, and gets his upper body in there, and comes out with the, uh, the striking bit of your uh, flint and steel in one hand, and your bar of soap in the other. Shiny. Like just kind of looking at him. Shiny thing. And he's just sort of holding the soap like he has no idea what he's looking at. That's a good snack. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it licks it make a fortitude save. The other end <laughs> comes down and physically lands on the ground in front of Darren here. It looks up at him, kind of has his eyes. Yeah. Go on, get out of here. And uh, he sort of whips around and lashes his little tiny tail at you like, Meh, just sort of whipping it your direction. Rude. He's rude. He's a rude dude. <laughs> well, we have a nice imp, a silly imp, another silly imp, and then this guy. This, guy's a this rude guy dude. right here. It's going to be, it's a, this is an attack roll. It's going to be a 22 to hit you. 22? Yeah, he's going to get me right in the thigh. Ow! <laughs> and as it hits, this little like fleshy, again, it kind of looks like almost like a fleshy little devil tail they have. As it hits you, you do feel like a little spine kind of jab you. Um, what's your alignment, good sir? Uh, my alignment's lawful good. You are going to take four points of damage, uh, which is literally entirely evil because he <laughs> rolled zero on the piercing. Oh, one on the piercing damage, three on evil. Uh, so it's still four. You're not going to be weak to it or anything. Ah! <laughs> I need you to actually make me a fortitude save. Oh my god. You got a little stinger. Are you okay? Not me and fortitude saves again. Uh, that's a 16. 16, it's a crappy little imp poison. You feel it kind of burn and you stumble a little bit because it kind of, it takes a lot of, it saps the strength out of your leg for a brief moment. And that imp flaps back up to about 10 feet in the air and about 10 feet back from you, uh, kind of cackling. This is an ugly one. He's got an ugly face. I hate him. You... He's a rude dude. He's a rude John. Dude. I think you're so. very handsome. All right, so this one. He's got uh, your soap and your flint and tender. Your flint and steel. And he's giggling. He's having a great time. Um, I'm glad you're having so much fun. Um, I want this power attack punch him. He is right. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you would kindly bugger off. It's a nine plus ten, so 19. 19 hits. Cool, Leo. So it's D4 plus strength, non-lethal damage. 2D4. 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 The power attack. Power attack. 2D4 plus hey, strength, non-lethal damage. Um, I can't actually read this one. No one can. So it's a total of seven. Seven points of damage. Okay. Punch. This is three. Um, so as you punch it, you kind of hit him. He's pretty small. These things are maybe a foot, like head to foot. The wingspans of you a foot and a half as they're flapping. You punch him and it like knocks him back a good bit. And you do it like with an audible high pitch, like, oh, as you hit him. And he drops the soap and he keeps a hold of the uh, the flint and the steel. That just kind of shoots out of his hand for momentum and <laughs> him staggering backwards. It's slippery. Uh, it is slippery. It just kind of zoop. And uh, it looks down at the soap and looks back at you. This one's mean. Stop this one. And then I pull out 
the spear. I was like, please, try. <laughs> and you feel like you're, you're, you're hit. You got him pretty solidly, but it didn't really seem to affect the imp that much. You're feeling it like they are a bit resistant to just being punched. Yeah, most things are. Um, Arden. <laughs> Actually, no resistance to non-lethal damage, which is... I guess not a ton of stuff, really. It's just everything you fight in Age of Ashes. Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 whatever they are, they seem very aggressive. I, I think we should just make them go away. They are pretty aggressive. Uh, <laughs> Diogenes Cinementus. Uh, and I'm going to find uh, a line of which, whichever I can get the most of them in that's 60 feet long, and I'm going to gust a wind and try to blow them the heck away. Mm. Can move if I move down and get two of them. If you right, move perfect. kind of out of this alleyway to that, south, you, you can go. gust the wind two of them and just like blow them into the Building. closed library yep. on the northern side of the road here. Okay, so what are they doing? Fortitude save. Fortitude save. I'm sure oh, they're well, good. I'll bet the imp's fantastic at those. That okay. was my bet. <laughs> Tiny little flying imp. Um, so the imp in the back is going to get a natural 20. Of course he is. <laughs> Holding on to the Wait, gun. Is, is that the one that's beside me that yeah. has charm? That's the one that's the one who's trying to steal your gun. Oh, uh, the reason he's not He's holding on to the gun. He just kind of pulls like a flag <laughs> for a second. Um, the imp in the front that casts charm on you. Whoosh! <laughs> he's like, oh, money, he money. He gets a 13. Uh, it's going to fail. And uh, he is going to get knocked prone. <laughs> and if he was flying... He's going to get pushed 30 feet, uh, knocked prone, and he's going to take 2d6 bludgeoning damage. Absolutely going to slam into that northern library door and just pop flap onto the ground and take 2d6 bludgeoning Oh, come bludgeoning on. That damage. was a nice one. He looked like a polite gentleman. Uh, it's going to be uh, 6 bludgeoning damage. 6? All right. You feel like he is going to take a, a good bit less than that. He's going to uh, take less from the he, door. Yeah, he looks yeah. like he takes it pretty well, but he bounced off the door and lands on his face on the ground and is kind of a... Uh, F f f like kind of flailing. Uh, it's till my next, beginning of my next turn though. So the gust of wind stays. Uh, so he's actually just splattered into the door. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a cartoon. And you can't get off it. The other one's just hanging onto your gun, flapping, <laughs> flopping. Ah, these are the buggers. They're really annoying to hit. I guess I gotta, by the prayer of Blue Bico, tear them apart. Blessed. Okay. Ooh. Um, so that starts as a five, foot, five foot bubble around yourself. Yep. So anyone adjacent to you, uh, which at the moment is just red. Beth. Yep. Uh, but we'll keep the genie to grow as we focus on it. And you have yep. an action. I'm going to go ahead and take that last action. And he's going to like just concentrate. And then the orange aura that's surrounding him will just expand a little bit more. I don't see any reason you couldn't immediately sustain it. All right. Ten foot bubble. So then that yep. will reach. And then anyone within the Darren bubble well. immediately feels like ready to go, invigorated and just an urge to punch things really, really hard. It's, it's like drinking doing? milk. The blessing of the fire goblin. <laughs> What's the goblin doing? Well, Helping I'm you. Gonna reach into my bag, grab a few silvers, and I'm gonna look at the one trying to take my gun. I'm gonna offer him a coin. Now, if I give you this shiny coin, would you just buzz off, please? And uh, as he sees that there, Pull out with an action. What's your class? What's your deception? What do you? Yeah, I'm gonna. You, know, you actually use a legitimate offer. You'll pay him. It's not really deception. What's your? Di maybe diplomacy. I'm not trained. This is just diplomacy. I'm trying to figure out how to, how to do this. Diplomacy makes sense. Uh, that is a ten total. I rolled a nine. What ten? Just like here's a, here's a silver. You He's flapping in the wind, hanging on to your gun. Like, I'm making he, the offer. Yeah, I'm not he, expecting him to he take He really it wants the gun. He doesn't seem interested in the silver. Oh, well, I tried. Put him back. <laughs> Two actions. Yep. So. <laughs> That's a silver piece. It is. Can't throw that then away. I'm going to draw my gun with him still on the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> just pull it around. He has basically no weight to it. You just pull the gun around, and he sort of loses his grip on it. And it's just frantically flapping against the wind here. Uh, I'm gonna look at him and be like, I'll give you six seconds. Uh, Darren. <laughs> <laughs> Before you cease to exist. <laughs> Again, it is a meta joke. <laughs> Reth, how long have you lived here? You're trying to negotiate with the imps? Yeah, they listen sometimes. Crossbow, Usually load it. food, though. Th these things just live here? And you think I'm weird? No, this whole city is awful. You're reacting well, hunt. Wait. 
I didn't have the crossbow out before, yeah, right? Draw, load, hunt would be. Draw, load, hunt. Okay. Uh, draw, load, shoot. <laughs> draw, load, fire wildly. The one that came after you, it's up. Yeah. All right. It's a menace. Uh, that's only a four in the die. That's not great. That's uh, going to be a 12. Yeah, I mean, 12. He's going to kind of flap out around as this crossbow flies by him. They're the ones that survive. The 13. You're in his AOE. Still not going to. I counted I it. Um, oh, the ones. Okay. The ones that survive any real amount of time in Corvus who get pretty good at dodging <clears throat> crossbow bolts specifically. <laughs> yeah. So like, this, is, uh, this is the thing that they're kind of used to. So as that loses by him. It's just another 12 day. This amp is going to fly right back down past this crossbow bolt, uh, whipping this tail down underneath him just towards center mass on uh, Darren. He's a grumpy lad. He is. Um, he's gonna, not, he's not one corny. straight cat. He's a grumpy machine. lad with some S tier RNG. <laughs> 26. That's Whoa. A hit. <laughs> Whoa. Gets me right in the face. Ah. Um, you're going to take another one point of physical damage and two points of evil. Three points of damage. Ah, ah, ah. And maybe part two too. Four to two. Wow. Okay. Yeah, 26. No, oh, you're crazy. Six days. You're totally fine. Right. And then again, he flies back up into the air. Pretty confident of his ability. I to am going to get bolts. you. The one in front of John here as you pull out the spear, drops to the ground. Uh, he's, he's kind of floating like at level here because he was grabbing at your backpack and you punched him. Uh, but as he falls, he enlarges uh, as he comes down, landing on the ground as a massive spider, a medium-sized spider uh, that were it to stand upright would be a little taller than you, legs can uh, legs considered. Uh, 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 and they don't warn you about this when you come into the city? Did you stop by the tourist desk? They I should. Did. I actually did stop by the tourist desk. That's the first place Gadget Clan actually took me. Those of you who live in Corvosa would be familiar with the occasional abilities of these amps to transform themselves, but they don't do it usually terribly often. These ones are just particularly ornate, it seems. Is that or may, or, or irate? Ornery right. and Iray came together into Ornate. Mm -hmm. They're very fancy. Yeah. See, and, and you wonder. Uh, little top that, hats. that was just concentrate actions. It just trigger. concentrate okay. divine polymorph transportation. Yeah, I was, I was thinking about if it would trigger. It does not. Yeah. Uh, and as he transforms into this spider here, he rears up his two sets of front legs and bears his fangs like little daggers in his mouth. Cold stare at him. And you can see uh, where you punched him. He's a little lad. You can even see where you punched him is already on the on the spider form, kind of more visibly discolored. But as he rises up, that is going to heal completely uh, before he comes down striking at you with his little spider fang. So that he's uh, he going to bite. 23. These dudes are rolling absolute fire. It hits. On the hitting portion and nothing else. <laughs> And he gonna bite you for four points of physical damage and two points of poison. It just straight up does poison damage. I don't need a fortitude save. Uh, hmm. In the back line here, one imp is currently being blasted against a doorway. And is gonna make a fortitude save, which is gonna fail hilariously. Hmm. Um, so he's still plastered against the doorway and just did, absolutely did, did can't. Did he crit fail? Because no, he takes he regular fell. I got 15, so I'm sure it's a regular fell. But is he still flying? No. No, he's pinned to the door. What I'm saying, flying blade. creatures automatically crit fail, so I'm just wondering no, if he's, it's No, he's definitely just plastered okay, on the wall gotcha. here. Uh, so he's going to hang out there for a turn. <laughs> Not really going anywhere. Um, the other imp is going to take this and get blown around the side of Wrath here. Not trying to push up against it, just taking this flap to sort of circle you as you pull your gun out and try to steal the gun again. <laughs> Got to, got to respect his. I got a one. He's persistent. And he falls down. He's Total now hanging off the end of the barrel, um, and I'm about to pull the trigger. <laughs> he's already hanging off. He's like hugging the end of the barrel. And then I got a negative three <laughs> as well. <as> <laughs> <can draw. laughs> Into the gust of wind with him. <laughs> Is he climbing down the barrel at this point? He's like literally grabbed onto the barrel, like with it exactly up against him, <laughs> hanging onto wow. it, trying to wrestle it away from you with his negative one strength modifier. Look, I, like... feel, I feel real bad about what I'm about to do. Do you mind leaving? <laughs> I, was, I actually feel nothing fuzzy these things. Um, there's nothing more than rodents with wings. Power yeah, attack, stab him, because right. I'm just standing here now. 
um, hmm. for a total of a 24. Ooh, 24 will definitely hit. So that is a spear this time. So it's 2d8. And it's not non-lethal. So is that a 1 or a 7? That's a 1. That's a 1. So that's a total of a 14. A 14. Piercing. Yep. Pretty solid stab that you got there. As uh, again, you feel he is some degree of resistant to me. Living in Corvosa, you would know that part of the reason these imps are so hard to deal with is that their infernal nature does make them naturally resistant to traditional attacks. But I just don't understand how anyone lives in this forsaken city. I'm going to just take a couple steps back and just move back from, from the end. Like, listen here, you stupid imp. Come a little closer. <clears throat> Do it, idiot. Do it, idiot. <laughs> I'm all the way back. I'm next to problem. Um, Arden. Is there a gust of wind? In? So you're no longer threatening that spider. He's got reach. He's got a spear. Then, nah, um, well, he stepped further. He said he stepped further back. I just want yeah, to make sure. Yeah, so like if yeah. the thing yeah, comes yeah. up to him, he can't step up to him unless he steps twice. Uh, okay, I see, I see, I see, I see. Attack of opportunity bait. Arden. Big brain. Uh, it's fine. You want to be on the ground? Let's do this then. I don't think he wants to be on the ground. Isometra Hexus! Uh, and that's going to be a crushing ground, and I'm going to need a uh, reflex save. From which one? The spider. Oh, okay, the spider. Yeah, he's on the ground. He's doing spider stuff. Reflex save? Well, they're great at that one. If I roll good. 21. Regular success. That is going to be a regular success. On a regular success, um, he is going to... Is it a basic? Yeah. So he takes half. Sorry, it's my new, uh... Uh, so he will take four points of bludgeoning damage. All right. And it looks like that just barely does anything to him. Um, however, uh, I am going to channel my life force, uh, and as that happens, um... <laughs> His spidery energy will flow back up into me, and I will regain. Spidery energy. Yeah, and I will regain the focus point that okay. I just spent. That's that. Oh, there you go. That's, That's a pretty neat nice. Card. Okay, get a focus point. Neat. Spidery energy. She's Spider-Man. Uh, Leaves you one action left. Uh, which I will use to uh, come around uh, the one that's on the ground. Right here? The one's falling yep. off the door now. Yep. I was trying to get back up in the air. Yep. Just, hey, you okay down there? Okay. So, at this point, while you're dealing with these imps in the streets here, player three enters the game. Hmm. City sucks. Oh. On the uh, front side here, uh, on the, the, the flank where you, John, and uh, Darren are standing. First of all, the door to this restaurant, you see one of the servers inside scramble up and just shut the door. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the smart. imp shenanigans that are happening here. Uh, but descending down from the sky are a pair of tiny purple dragons. What? They're about as big as the imps, about a foot, tip to tail, uh, with some blue little less horns and more almost like sharpened frills around the back of, back of their uh, skull running down their neck and bright blue membranes inside their wings. Uh, those of you who live in Corvosa would probably also just without any kind of a check recognize a house drake hmm. um, which is exactly what it looks like it is. It is a tiny little menace Dragon. It's like if um, bearded dragons were was, was a literal. This is this is the stray cat. This is your stray cat. Uh, Corvosan residents, Darren and Reth, and probably also Floblin, just from exposure, would also know that house drakes absolutely freaking hate imps, <laughs> and they would immediately set upon the imps in the front line here. Um, the two of them descending, uh, the first one immediately down towards this spider beast uh, as it just kind of collides on top of them, dwarfed by the size of this spider thing. You see it open its uh, open its little jaw and just try to clamp down on the back of its dumb little spider head for a 22, <laughs> which is absolutely going to munch this little spider. Amps are seagulls. The house drakes are actual stray cats. 
for nine points of damage, killing it as the spider kind of collapses into the ground. <laughs> and then it's going, uh, and, and as it dies, it, it contorts and retracts and uh, come, turns back in this little imp. And you can see this house drake is extremely effectively bitten down and like ripped the back of this imp's head, far more effectively than your spear. Hmm. Uh, and it turns and lets out <laughs> towards the imp next to it, though well, it's up in the air, uh, which looks down its direction as the second drake just comes from behind and slams into that <laughs> one. You know, flying there. Do, do, do those work for the city and clean up the imps? No and yes. Uh, <laughs> the natural 20. <laughs> they, My attack hey. rolls are so high. I hate imps. It gets a natural 20. All natural predators. So. Yeah, and does 12 points of damage to that currently unharmed imp who's great at dodging crossbow bolts, not great at dodging house drakes crashing into it but from behind, and is going to attempt to grapple that imp in the air. Uh, which it's gonna colossally fail to do. As it comes in, it bites and tries to get its little claws up, but it hits too hard and spins the imp all the way around and kind of slings itself past the imp and just sort of tumbles on the ground next to the other house drake. Loblin. Well, uh, I didn't think I would ever see those, you know, help us at all. They usually try to steal my food. Anyway, well. Might as well give him a hand. Um, I'm going to use my first action to maintain my bless. Keep it. 15 every- feet. So I think everyone's in it now. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then I'm going to uh, oh, oh, go warm. ahead and uh, do what I do best. Horthan Takul. Produce flame. Which one? Uh, the one that w- was uh, that was fighting the uh, the drake, the house drake. Okay, the one that's not, it's still up in the air. Yeah, yeah fling. Fire. Boom. One's got real bit. And then, ooh, uh, that is a 26. 26 hits. That barely doesn't crit. That's a square hit with that produced flame. Oh, that didn't land anything. Come on, man. There we go. I can't see from that far away. That is a, so that is a seven. And as this hits, you see this perfectly centered blast of fire hit this imp, and just like out of force of it, pushes it back a little bit in the air. It gets spun around by the house drake and then flips over almost backwards, flapping from Flobla, or hit it from Floblin. But then still flapping, looks completely and absolutely unharmed. They are completely immune to fire. Well, well, I forgot about that, I suppose. We try to the team. Well, you're up. <laughs> right. I am woefully unprepared to fight Simps. I'm gonna reload the Arcubus with an imp hanging off the end of the uh-huh. barrel. I'm gonna point it up in the air <laughs> so I don't accidentally shoot something. And I'm gonna pull the trigger. Okay. <laughs> and the imp is gonna disappear. <laughs> it's definitely what put into this. He's clinging to the end of the gun. He has no idea what it is. And that will be right beside a 20, unfortunately. It is only an 8 on the die, so 18 total. So as it... 18 definitely hits. Yeah. Um, I mean, given they're just kind of made infernal resistance, the thing is, like, attached to the end of the gun, so the pressure blast kind of knocks it back and askew a little bit, and the bullet comes through almost immediately after. Just enough that it doesn't rip right through the mid, but it does pop it up into the air a bit. And uh, it'll take eight damage. And um, a neat thing about weapons with concussive, uh, which is a weapon trait, it does bludgeoning or piercing whatever they are least resistant to. I know it doesn't affect this. Yeah, it doesn't matter on this one specifically, but that is, it is automatically whatever is mm-hmm. best. Whatever is best. All right. And uh, then I'm going to reload again. <laughs> this is kind of spitting through the air as you have a bullet. You got like almost punch it. Two spinning ups. And I'm oh. just going to look at it and be like, well, tried to tell you. Because your, your standard weapons here are not like drawing blood. They're not piercing their skin, really. They're hitting them pretty hard. But the only thing that's gotten through their skin is the house tricks, mm. which are purpose built almost to rip them apart. Uh, Darren. All right. This darn thing. <laughs> you stabbed me twice. I'm really mad. Drake's going to get a piece of you, but reload, hunt prey, and shoot him. Maybe Stab I can catch once. it this time. Shame on you. <laughs> hey, there we oh. go. And I'm in the bless range. Uh, that's going to be a 27. 27 is a critical hit. Woo-hoo! Nice. 
crossbow that ace. That one pierce the skin. Plus precision. Uh, 60, 11, plus 2 from crossbow ace, 13, 26 piercing damage. Yeah, that would that's definitely more than enough with resistance to kill them from full health, and he has 3. Okay. Um, <laughs> so what... What happens to him? You shoot this through him. Uh, the thing, uh, the imp's gotten hit by the drake, spins around, Floblins knocks it back, and then this, the bolt just kind of, as the flame cloud kind of clears, the bolt just kind of comes through and foink, and then it just kind of rolls and kind of platters around before kind of sticking with the bolt kind of flopping out of it. <laughs> Doing. Yeah. <laughs> and ah! That one fully defeated. We just have the two in the back of the party now. Uh, one up above Reth who has very soundly been shot a little bit up into the air. Uh, he is going to fly over to the far end of this small plaza, to the street that you've come from, the southern side, uh, flying down towards the ground, spinning around. I want it! I want it! I want it! I want it! Uh, transforming as he does, his arms kind of growing out into little furry, hoofed, stout legs, his body largely widening as he gets very thick, his horns distorting into massive tusks and he turns into a boar putting his head down and charging across the ground towards Reth. You got a boar token? I don't have a boar token. I had a spider token for an unrelated reason actually. I, uh, so. I wonder if I can talk to it. I don't think so. I think it's still an end. And it is going to swing at you for an 11. No. <laughs> he just shoots these tusks up, gets absolutely nothing. Uh, the one on the ground next to Arden here, uh, is going to stand itself up on the ground and just sort of wildly lash out with its tail, just kind of going nuts, um, snapping it towards Arden, because you'd be the closest. I, I, I wouldn't do that if I were you. A 20? That'll hit. These tails. That, that, that'll hit. That'll hit. They're having more luck in their... Uh normal form than their transformed ones. Three points of piercing damage and one point of evil if you take that. So four uh, damage. I do. And then roll me a party. <laughs> this, this entire party is good. Yeah. Coming from Age of Ashes, this is phenomenal. We take evil damage now. I know, right? Being that's, good, uh, just, it's that's, just a disadvantage, that, that's, guys. That's, just... that's, that's going to be an, an eight. All of an eight. Does not critically fail. That's, that's good. what we're after. Um, and you're going to take this venom a lot worse than Darren does. Uh, a little worse than Darren does. You're going to take one point of poison damage. <laughs> Do remember that thing I said about having poison resistance isn't that bad? But you are also clumsy one. Mm. As this kind of makes you a little bit wobbly here. John. Uh, these things are absolute nuisance. I'm going to just kind of N nuisance, spin around Flobble and poisoning me. use the momentum as a spear to drive it into the boar. Like, hunting boar is actually a lot easier than you think. And as you go to... I get to help. <laughs> because what? I have cover fire. As a reaction, I can aid anyone within my first range increment attacking someone. Because I shot him, I get a plus one to the aid check. <laughs> okay. Does it, are you unload, does it discharge your gun? Nope. I just aim it at him. Covering... Cover fire. Intimidation. Yep. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's aid. covering fire from the previous bullet, I suppose. Yep. Okay, so you roll your aid first. As you come at him turning around, uh, you can already see he has uh, as well started to heal up from where the bullet has struck him and looks also perfectly fine. So that's a uh, 27 to aid. Okay, well, that definitely succeeds. You get a plus one to your attack roll. Whee! And it doesn't shoot. This is just, I just shot you. I'll do it again. Yeah, it's the previous shot. Mm. So that's a 20 total. 20 will definitely hit him. As I just spin it around and... Aim for the other. That was a power attack, by the way. I didn't say it, but... Oh, fair enough. Yeah. It's the only thing you've done. I'll give you a little bit better. Yeah, it's, done. that's all I've been doing. So, 11 plus 4 is 15. 15? I've been trying to get him in the eye. Would kill him had he not healed. Uh, but a solid blow, nonetheless. Arden now. A little poison. Feel a little mm. bit of imp venom. I, mm, I'm gonna get you. Uh... Arcus Malefican a gouging claw as a little kind of bruisey kind of claw comes in and tries to go mm, at the imp that just tried to get him from the floor. Fair enough. That did get you. Yeah, just, he didn't do a good enough job. Okay. Hey. 
um, in the bless range, so that's going to mm-hmm. pretty much wash. So that's going to be a 23. 23 hits. Won't be I don't think your long. clumsy affects this. Spell attack roll. This is a spell attack roll, yeah. Oh, that's off your that's caster right. clumsy 24, 24. Spells, going to hit. Did, uh, telekinetic projectile. No, still not. a spell attack roll. Still a spell attack Really? Yep. I thought it was a ranged attack. Mm-mm. Nope. I did not know that. That's going to be seven points of slashing damage. Okay. So, <laughs> lands a, a hit, but he's still flailing around, upset mm, oh, Not, upset-y. Not this time. <laughs> and uh, he'll raise up his shield. Maybe a fortitude save. So he does this on a day to day basis. They're not usually this aggressive, but sometimes we just got unlucky. 21. 21 will succeed, so you overcome the poison. All right, that's... Uh, the pair of drakes back here are pretty quick. Not quite get to the boar in one fly action quick, but the one in the back is going to take two actions to just kind of fly up over the party and descend on the boar the, that's kind of reeling from the shot and the spear stab just as he had the imp prior. He's in bless range. <laughs> is he considered an ally? I mean, if he's a friendly, then yes. That is all, only going to give him a 14. Uh, so he goes on to bite on this one. The boar's thicker hide fends him off decently well. I should uh, be aiding these. The human turning, <laughs> the human turning into a form that's a little bigger and a little harder for them to to really deal with. The other house drake flies up over uh, directly above Floblin, uh, kind of above everyone, and opens it, its mouth and with a little hiss, sprays out what looks almost just like a cloud of mist of like a uh, just a silvery very thin spray across both imps and uh it's actually gonna gonna hit Reth. it's not gonna reach arden it's a very short little spray but it is gonna hit Reth. uh they're not like going out of their way to not hit you they just hate imps a lot and you're kind of in their way you need to make me a will save as do both imps. You uh, and your saves. 14. 14 will fail. You are stupefied too. Hey, you know what doesn't affect shooting a gun? You're dumb now. <laughs> but it does It time. does no damage. It's just like a weirdly disorienting, like almost kind of hallucinogenic mental effect. It is magical. It is not like an inhaled thing. <sighs> and uh, everything starts to kind of distort and warp and you can feel like your brain is almost overloaded by the sensory input here. Uh, The two imps... It's baby's first uh, synesthesia. Two imps are going to get a 26 and a 23 and be perfectly fine. So, (laughs) helping or hurting, House Drake, helping or hurting. (laughs) Floblin. Well, uh... Both imps look pretty hurt, by the way. They're both pretty injured. I figured. Well, if... But the thing is, they're immune to fire, so that's uh-huh. kind of difficult. So, you know what? I have this for a reason. I'm just going to um, step up to the imp that's on the ground and uh, stab him with my sickle. Fair enough. Give me an attack. <laughs> that is a total of 17. 17 is exactly the AC that will hit. It barely <laughs> catches him. <laughs> 1d4. Plus nothing? Plus nothing. Three. Three. Yep. So as you hit him, your sickle's gonna hit him, but it's just gonna kind of... <laughs> you, you it's hit like hitting horn. a wad of clay. Like, it kind of hits him and squishes him a little bit, but doesn't seem to do anything or bother him at all. Uh, really. Um, Doing great. My last action, uh... Shield touched. You want to sustain your bless? Yeah, or sustain my bless. Yeah, I was like, yeah. I'm pretty, you, you knew with the casting thing, so like, I'll give you a freebie for now because it goes away if you don't sustain it. Um, yep, keeping I'll, I'll, I'll maintain that. The expanding bless ref. What in the tarnation? Why would. Do, mm, are you. Are you okay? What are they trying to do hitting me with this? This is not intelligence, I don't think. Hey, dragons, are you intelligent? You're busy attacking the imps. I'm, I'm going to look at the imp that turned into a boar. Now, see, silly you, I'm good at shooting those. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
Yeah, I'm, nice. I'm good at shooting those. That's a 14, 15, 16, 26. 26 will hit. <laughs> so close. Good at one off. Wow. One off. One off. We have two one off the crits. With I bless, could re right? Yeah, yeah. With, with bless. I could re roll. Don't. don't you already hit. Roll yeah. yeah. Dang. And that is going to be seven damage. Seven damage? What happens to this boar? It's a boar. You sh shoot it, it dies. Shoot it, it <laughs> dies. <laughs> and it turns back into an F, and I'm like, wait a minute. I thought that was a boar. I thought we were going to be eating lunch. Five, two, God bro. damn it. <laughs> Did I miss it? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm starting to not like this city. <laughs> I'm going to look over at the, the imp that I think is pretty cool and be like, was there a boar here? <laughs> crazy. He's getting just whacked by Flavlin and kicked <laughs> by Arden on the ground here. I think he's a cool dude. <laughs> Jeez. You, he did take hostile actions against your allies, so like the charm does wear off. Yeah, but it's funnier. Stupid. I mean, yeah, but it's not take the funny. Dude, sure. he's just kicking it with his voice. Darren? <laughs> Literally. Over here getting... All right. Oh. So Darren is going to uh, leave some space for that house drake. He does not want to get in the way here. Uh, but he's going to uh, sprint over, uh, end up next to Arden, um, hunt prey as he does, and he's going to whip his long sword out of its sheath uh, with a quick draw action. Ooh. And bring it into a stance and a quick thrust down, trying to pin this thing on the ground where it is. Give some stabbing. That's a three on the die. All right, so that's uh, that's like an 11. Uh, 11, definitely going to miss. A little hastily uh, running over here. Uh, leaving this imp on the ground right here as he is with the house drakes descending. Uh, you see him focus up for a brief moment. I'll look at him. And I'll still let you take that silver. And a little... <laughs> he, he, his wounds... Start to heal up a little bit, but but not much. He's just sitting there, literally surrounded two house drakes now turning his direction. Uh, he feels the tide turning, and he looks up to Reth right in front of him, just kind of reaches out uh, with a hand. Help me! Help me! Take my hand! Protect me from these flying demons! Which is hilariously ironic coming from an imp. <laughs> and uh, holds his little tiny imp hands up to you. Oh, that's adorable, but you kind of got yourself into this one, didn't you? I, it is good luck! A blessing for my masters, please! I can't stop them. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he is going to fly 15 feet up into the air. Um, I'm gonna definitely going to provoke him. Like him. Opportunity. It doesn't mean that I have to help him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just doing, I'm doing this. He also got offered a literal infernal bargain, which is typically not wise to accept. <laughs> I'm doing the city of Corvosa a favor here. I still can't read these dice. It's a 10. I, it's, it's a 10. 10. I, it's, I don't know why. I don't know why. Do you want a different color? I'll link them I, a different color yeah, just probably, for you. Hot pink? I don't know. Look, I, I, I don't, but I'll buy hot pink <laughs> ink just for you. 21. We need to take this man to an optometrist. Please. Uh, 21 will hit him. I don't know why. Black on blue is very hard for me to read, apparently. So was white on blue. It's black on, like, teal. Nine. Nine, nine points of damage is just enough to do it through the resistance. Ha -ha. He, he goes to start flying up to escape. What do you do? And just, as he's flying up, just one big thrust over Reth's shoulders. Get him. Pull him back down. So tell me, is there a bounty on these things? Do we like turn them in for a copper or something? Some steeds do that for pets. I, I think there is actually. We should just collect these things and take it to what? What will we take these to? Do, do, do those things? Are those things friends? Hi. And uh, as you stab that, and it dies. Uh, one of the house drakes, the one that's on the ground here that was going after the boar, hops over and picks up the carcass of the dead boar imp in its mouth and takes off and flies up around the edge of the building out of sight. And the other one just continues up after. They're both gone as fast as they appeared. All right, so I'm going to just grab the bodies of these other two imps. And you say there is a bounty on these, right? Maybe I a society check. You don't have to be trained. Just people that live here make me a society yeah, check. Please. This is... Uh, I ten? I happily make you a society check with stupefied two. <laughs> wow. Um, still stupefied two, yes. <laughs> That's 12. 
nat 20 and i'm just, and i have zero in society floblin knows this <laughs> floblin knows. there's not a lot of places floblin can really go when he does need coin um An 11. but perhaps the more open-minded people uh within the town within the city of corvosa that won't immediately snap judge him because he is a weird little goblin demon uh are those at the academy uh the academy is actually the source of all of these imps uh, because it is a fairly common trial for apprentice wizards to uh, gain some of their uh, no, uh, notifications and their not notifications their credentialing what credentialing credentials we'll go with we'll go with credentials is close enough to what I'm thinking of uh, and their qualifications is mm. what I'm looking for is that they have to summon and bind an imp. And it is a moderately difficult task. Summoning an imp, not super hard. Binding an imp, definitely harder than summoning an imp. So you end up with a lot of nuisance imps all throughout the city. Uh, because these things are spectacularly adept at getting away from people. Uh, Darren and Reth and Floblin would all know uh, they can transform their shape obviously into other like less battle forms they can turn to small little birds and just get away or hide they can quite literally turn invisible they can charm people like they are very good at escaping any and all setups meant to contain them and then they're just loose in corvosa and they are a menace and the academy absolutely pays a silver piece for dead imps uh, that you can find throughout the city. So you can take the four of these little full long it buys, throw them in a sack, run by the academy later. Four bucks, easy. Well, the three. The three. 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 The, the Drakes wanted Drakes, to change Drakes. to cash one in. No, the Drakes earned their key. Yeah, they got lunch. They deserve it. Yep. And those of you who live in Corvosa would also know this is not a terribly uncommon sight because there are plenty of house Drakes as well. Uh, a great number of them that take up residence within the city for a less annoying reason. Uh, the amps are here largely as a big mistake. The house drakes are actually indigenous. Uh, they, have all, they, they have always been here. Um, they're not called house drakes because people bring them in. They're called house drakes because it's kind of just a funny moniker for a tiny dragon. Hmm. And some people do keep them as an exotic pet. They are quite intelligent. They can be taught to talk. Hmm. Um, just like an imp can, or at least to fully understand language and to attempt to talk with their little snappy bearded dragon mouth. Um, I'm going to find one and do that immediately. But they absolutely hate imps and for some reason or other are very adept at hunting them. So they have absolutely thrived in Corvosa, hmm. feasting on the Circle local imp population. So this thing that's happened was a particularly egregious incident, but not something that's in any way unheard of throughout the city of Gorvosa. Our fair city, everyone. Great place to live. Yeah. Yay, Galarian. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yay, Galarian. <laughs> that's, that's three silver. That's easy money. They're not usually that hostile, and traditionally imps, even those that are bold enough to descend on people, uh, aren't... Like, they're not hunting people. They're just nuisances. Like, if you had just given them your gun, they almost certainly would have left you alone. You're obviously not going to do that. But I mean, most people who aren't a party of adventurers that feel confident finding them off, they'll just, like, give them whatever they want so <laughs> they will leave. Because they are surprisingly dangerous with if they get ornery. Yeah. Especially in a flock. Like, uh 15 imps show up, and they're like, we want all of your bread. <laughs> And you're just like, here's my basket. Don't kill me. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if we have to take out imp insurance in case the imp <laughs> stuff. Yeah, thriving business here in Corvosa. Yeah, the imp insurance imp industry. Insurance. Uh, 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 all right. Anyone hurt? I mean, uh, I, yeah, you got me a couple times. I, I, everyone, everyone, gather around. Everyone, gather around. Gather around. Gather around, children. So, what is this academy at? What can I? What? Impetus. What should we cash these in at? Here. Oh, uh. It's about over oh. there, I think. You know how. It's not far from here. It's a little ways to the north. Yeah, so That's why there's so many imps. Make up. <laughs> everyone get five, five points of health back. Cool. Cool. I'll take it. Yeah. And so we make a detour to the academy, get rid of these carcasses, and then. I mean, we're not on any strict timetable. There's the no reason we can The restaurant door kind of creaks open. They're gone. Yes, they're gone. Yeah, you're yeah. Right here, actually. Thank gods. 
And opens the door and then heads back inside to him. Do you think doing what he's doing? He's, guys, have you had breakfast? I, I'm starving. I, uh, he, I have he, Here's the other. I ain't got much. Oh, what's he got? I'm, I'm starving. We got coffee. Uh, we got a uh, same boar we had a few days ago. Not entirely gone yet. Uh, oh, okay. Two and silvers a plate. Two Which silvers a plate? Expensive. Yeah. I think we need to cash in some imps first. Well, let me tell you, the food I got stockpiled is going to be a lot cheaper. That's right. Well, thank you. Good luck with that. <laughs> You're not going to want to buy theory. nothing for about <laughs> maybe a full week, honestly. I think you and I are going to have to go out into the wilderness. I'll, ch I'll reread my manual and we'll worry. catch something. I can help you out with that too. We'll, we'll Oh, never mind. So you're heading up to the academy, taking a little detour here? Yeah. You turn your way up. Probably shouldn't bring imp carcasses to the palace. I mean, they'd probably appreciate it too, honestly. I have a bounty for it, but they'd be like, okay. Yeah. Good job. Like, Good. <laughs> oh, thanks for getting <laughs> service. Yeah. It's like taking coyote pelts to the police station. They're just it's like, like taking squirrel tails to a... Good <laughs> job. They're a nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> More or less. Yeah, that's, that's actually pretty... Yeah, that's about how... Game Warden's next door. Look up the door. American <laughs> War on Squirrels. <laughs> So as you move up, they have a fine description of the university in here. I just, there are, they, this is almost backwards mode. They have so many things that are described so thoroughly and I wasn't prepared for us to come over here because I didn't really consider that this was going to come up. Uh, oh, you killed the imps with the bounty. You want to go turn the bounty in? Oh, mm. Ah, uh, there's no bounty, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I misspoke the wrong thing. What you're next to is the University of Corvosa, which is not the Academy, which is where all the imps that are. Um, the Academy is in the Heights, which is way up north, actually. Or the Heights is uh, mm -hmm. way, down way south. up west. It's actually the same district that the castle's in. It's actually a little past the castle. It's on the other side. Well, we, same we, direction we can do it after. Right? We can do it after. Going. I mean, we're literally going to carry imp carcasses around no, with us. No, we can do it now. For not three hurry. silver? Absolutely. For yeah. the uh, the map, by the way, if you want to pull the map of Corvosa real quick so we can see like, it. I forgot. This is literally peasant, what it is. They would carry those bodies around the city five times. Mm, yeah, somehow. The Academy is an absolutely massive establishment and uh it is something that uh i, I just told i saw university on the map and i was like oh yeah that sounds right to me uh, it is a huge campus that takes up more actual like land space than the huge pyramidal citadel of castle corvosa itself uh, it is to the north of it uh, the north end of the heights almost towards the narrows and old corvosa it is it is actually a distance it's a bit of a distance you can just turn Fog of War off for this map. I it is easy. You can see Castle Corvosa here is that square building about mm -hmm. in the middle, right? That pyramid thing. That huge T in the circle north of that is the Academy. Ah. Uh, and you are currently east of Castle, like almost due east of Castle Corvosa. So it is actually a pretty decent what, distance. Okay. D Darren, what, what do they do with the Academy? You know, I've never been in there, but I've certainly heard a lot of wild stories. It's still early morning, isn't it? It's still early morning, yes. Yeah, we have plenty of time. We can just detour over to the academies and go to the castle. I mean, it's I'm not up. like we're pressed on time. The, the, I'm and you up would for know that the academy itself is one of the most uh, prestigious things Corvosa has, really. It is one of the more renowned wizard schools throughout the entire Inner Sea region. Uh, it is an it is like the Harvard of Mage Academy. Have you ever considered summoning something other than imps as well, a test? <laughs> the full on Baylors. Throughout <laughs> the inner seas, there are a variety of prestigious wizarding academies that largely uh, like they offer all sorts of classes, of course, but like any proper uh, educational facility, they specialize in a school of magic, and the academy is the absolute home of Summoning. everyone together. Summoning. Conjuration Creation. magic. So, this is this is like the chemistry department dumping its waste into the local water supply. That's just effectively the way this is working. Yes. <laughs> so it's, also, well, it's more like they have the waste that it escapes containment and climbs into the local water <laughs> supply. <laughs> so much better. <laughs> yeah. so Less. They, they teach magic from from books. Suable. Less suable. Not liable. Um, less liable. Less negligent, maybe. <laughs> so, 
Is yeah, it? I don't know. <laughs> I feel they like it's a good idea. the so. correct procedure. The imp was just smarter than they were. But uh, heading up to the academy afterwards is definitely something that you could do uh, after making your way into Castle Corvosa and doing whatever it is you're going to do with this bridge. Um, it's not too much farther to the castle itself. And uh, at this point, even not too far into the morning, most of the protests have been kept a great, have been moved to a, a pretty large distance from the castle grounds. That's why those that are still happening are in the major market plazas throughout the city. Uh, the Corvosan Guard, the Sable Company, and the Hell Knights of Corvosa were able to get this under control kind of surprisingly quickly. I would say end with minimum bloodshed, but I'm not going to lie to you guys. Uh, <laughs> Hell Knights <laughs> do not care. <laughs> Hell Knights do not care. So, uh, you would, as you're passing through the streets here, like some talk of things, some doors you're walking past, there are people that uh, are just around, uh, and especially to get close to the castle. It sounds like the guard and the sable company were doing their best to bring order to the city and get everything under control. But as soon as the Hell Knights came out, Everyone calm down real quick. <laughs> <laughs> you can say what you want about the Hell Knights. They are nothing if not efficient. They're good at their job. They have a reputation. And that reputation was almost that it was enough to remove most of the uh, angry riders from the streets. <laughs> hang the queen! Hell, that walks out. My bad. Sorry. Have a nice day. Yeah? <laughs> queen, Sorry, hang... The next the, country over. The queen is what I was calling my laundry. I don't want to, it's, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I have a thing. I have to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I, I take medication. Nobody messes with the Hell Knights. No one. Knights. Uh, but at this point. Asmodeus is just like, <laughs> they're cute. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, Castle Corvosa is much more under control, but very locked down. They're like uh, little, little even bones. as you approach the building, you can still see a, uh, platoon of soldiers wielding uh, pole arms and heavy crossbows lined up around the outside of the building uh, at each and it, the castle's approachable from any of the four directions all the main roads lead to a staircase leads up in the, in the structure itself uh, with more crossbows almost just bristling out of the sides of the thing where pairs of these guards are per, uh, posted up and down the stairs uh, it's it looks pretty well secure uh, the castle is far and away the largest single building in Corvosa, a massive and imposing black structure, a testament to the power of whatever overlord wow. ruled this land thousands of years ago, long before it was Corvosa. I haven't seen it up, up close before. It is hundreds of yards across. And it, and massively tall. Oh, it it's a lot of stone. You must it's be. It's beautiful. It doesn't look like we can just walk in. There's a lot of. I've read Points books. Objects. I've read books about it, about how it was built. But wow, being up close to it is—it's really incredible. The foundation of the castle itself is an ancient monument, which is a, a black pyramidal base that the castle sits on top of. Its hmm. walls and spires extending a great reach up into the sky, uh, and like I said, each of the four castle roads from the various directions, leads to a massive staircase up the side of this pyramidal base to the four gates of Castle Corvosa proper. Um, one corner of the foundation has actually all but wholly collapsed, and it is the southernmost edge, so you'd be able to see it on your left as you come in from the east here. It'd be a, a thing that is known to everyone that lives here, who's, who's even seen it any amount of up close. Uh, much of the pyramid has crumbled <coughs> down and collapsed, uh, but almost immediately... Uh, that, too, was added into the structure itself as a small, um, bustling smithy and uh, market was built out of the corner of this as a, with a small amount of public-facing markets, but the higher-end artisans that are on retainer for the castle uh, processing their metal and their wood and their wagon repairs and all of that immediately on site in what would probably be the only really uh, vaunted facility for this uh, kind of artisan work within Corvosa. Uh, but again, it's, it's largely repairs and maintenance they do there. Uh, it, it gives it a very unique and immediately recognizable uh, silhouette as a landmark, this three-sided pyramid with this thing collapsed into this massive, intricate work 
of shops and facilities. It's, it's another the, three-sided pyramid? Ooh, the one side of it collapsed. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right, so, right. so it ends up being three-cornered, three right. I suppose. Right. So that's yeah, four sides. Uh, but as you approach, normally, if any of you that live in the city have ever had business in the castle before, which I'm 50-50 if that's ever happened, mm-hmm. or wanted to come in for whatever reason. I, I'm going to say no. I've studied it a lot. So probably none of you have physically been yeah, here before. Yeah, probably never actually been and Probably you would, never walked even close enough to get a good look at it. You would uh, move up, clearly approaching the staircase here, with only a half dozen guards posted at the bottom with their large uh, round, uh, with their large squared shields and their pole arms. And uh, immediately, all six of them would pivot a bit, not like in a practiced unison motion, but like as they saw you were approaching, just kind of adjust the shield around, lower the points of their halberds. And the uh, woman in the front would address you immediately. What business have you at Castle Corvosa? Uh, re- returning lost property. Returning lost property? The, the what, the guard? Take it to Citadel of Loshinik. The, 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 the queen's lost property. Indeed. I suppose this is more of a query than a returning necessarily. Where would we take something like that. Obviously not to the front gate. And I imagine there'll be someone wanting to ask us questions. We have answers to them. And she uh, still not sure puts her halberd up and uh, they all kind of relax their stances a little bit and she, she sort of comes forward. Property of the Queens. What and how did you come across it? Ah, that, those those questions right that, there. That, that, that's kind of a longer story, but it, it well, it's this. And you pull the bridge out and uh, she takes the halberd up and put, loops it through a uh, sling across her back and just kind of uh, holds out her hand for it and takes it. Does that mean you could hand it to her? No, he is. Yeah. He's, his hand is shaking a little, but he's handing it so to I'll her. She'll just take it. Bloody hells. Uh, one, one moment, please. And she heads back to the group of guards. And you see all the guards kind of like shuffle a little bit closer ever, like towards where she's coming. Like, everyone kind of wants to look. Their focus is turned from you guys to... What doing? That's a, a lot of pointy sticks for a castle you're supposed to just be able to walk into. Well, uh, I, I can kind of understand it with the recent unrest. Better safe than sorry. And she comes over and uh, walks up to another one of them, and then three of them kind of huddle up. Three of them are sort of on the side, look over, and then look back to you guys and just kind of go back to like scan the area and obviously trying to sort of like they want to know, but like the defense discipline has definitely dropped at this point. The three of them are talking together for a moment. She's clearly showing them this brooch. And she uh, hands it over to another guy who slings his pole arm uh, back as well, and uh, uses his free hand to unbuckle the attachments of this a pretty massive. It's not quite a tower shield, but it's a huge shield, a squared shield he has attached to his arm, uh, and takes it off, and uh, goes over to a small station they have at the bottom of the stairs. It looks like it's very much uh, temporary. It's been cobbled together, a small stash of supplies and uh, basic uh, areas for them to rest. And sets his shield back behind the thing. And then comes back out and raises a hand to the grip you. Uh, oi. We can take a, uh, I, I suppose, this is definitely the Queen's. You'll follow me. Uh, that, there we go. See, uh, there we go. You, you sure you, you sure they're not going to gonna hurt us? Oh, but, uh, of course not. No, we're can here you, under legitimate business. We have real reasons. Us, They'll, of course, have questions. Do us a favor and assure my friends here that you're not going to hurt them. Of course. Uh, a bit paranoid. Understandably, uh, we need assurances that uh, you intend the same. Uh, you'll be leaving your weapons here at the station at the base of the stairs. Oh, of course. Oh, yep. Of course. Perfectly fine. I trust no one else other than a guard. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want some help with that, John? I can. <laughs> we'll just put. We'll just leave you here. <laughs> I am the weapon. Um, weapon. He just sounds like a one weapon. clasp and then just kind of shuffles out of this, and the Do weapons you want stand me to up on their own. Stay inside, or. Nice. Oh, you're fine. You'll be oh, okay. <laughs> Floblin. Uh, as you're, you're putting your <coughs> sickle down in this little rack here, you need some fuel for your fire, I think, Woo-hoo. my friend. Go up to three, uh-huh. comrade. There was Thank a card you, in Mr. the rack. Jake Dean Paler. Daring attempt. How hard could it be? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like one of those roll with an advantage or failing uh, well, in a horrible punishment. I don't punishment. think that we should have given that to Flowerboard. <laughs> 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 but you, uh, you put all your weapons down, and uh, as each of you look like you're done, he, no, who would probably, I guess, who has the least weapons? Oh. Me. Probably I don't Flavlin have any. Or Artie. You have nothing? 
So, uh, I mean, I, yeah, I just got a sickle. That's it. Arden, uh, as you, you know, he would motion to come over and just kind of uh, show you his hands for a moment. I'm just going to check and just briefly pat you down. Um, I, 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 have, I have I have this, but it's it's a it's a focus for for my magic. I can't, I can't really unhand myself of, of that. And he he, he take as he sees that. I, 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 I swear not not to use it with, within the, the palace. Can't let you bring it in. He, he, here here, please. I have to have the wizards look it over. They're busy. Pl- pl- I don't know nothing about magic. Pl- please please be careful with it. Look, I can promise you, you got all the rest of the retainer down here. Nothing's gonna happen to any of your things. Um, and then he would turn probably to Floblin and kind of look at you, hey. and he just he just sort of like <laughs> <laughs> Floblin that like even doesn't even actually touch. Him. Like you're good. That's uh, <laughs> turns over, uh, checks Reth, checks Dar- Jar- Darren, checks John. I assume none of you are trying to smuggle weapons no. over the castle. You're not the role of perception check against any of you guys. I think that's all of them. Okay, I think you might think. accidentally find one on John. <laughs> Knife in his hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and uh, he gets the entire sling for his pole arm off of his body and uh, lays it down in their little rack next to the shield. And uh, then just kind of rests his hand on the hilt of a long sword that he has as his belt. All right. Uh, come on up into the castle then. Um, right. Follow me. He, he seems like he's. He's sort of second guessing this. Uh, no perception check is necessary to tell that he's several times clearly has the thought, I shouldn't do this, and then decides to do it anyway. Hmm. Um, if anybody wants to roll a perception check, sure. Especially you, I will give a plus two, Darren Sable Company Marine Man. Okay. That's good because I didn't roll well. <laughs> 16. 16? I believe uh, it's a 13. I have an eye patch. <laughs> <laughs> that should answer your question. I, I, I also got a 13. John? I got a 15. You guys are garbage. Good hey, thing, listen. Good thing a second level DC is I'm exactly the, 16. I am so, the best so garbage. Darren gets there with his plus two. Woo. You would... Uh, he's... They're fairly trained, but this this man clearly is a decent level of exhaustion, as are all of these guards. Uh, you would imagine they probably have not slept. Um, and it looks clear that they have been here probably since the riots. It's like an emergency retinue. They have what they could have. Um, and this isn't a face that they should ever give the public, especially to like an unknown quantity coming in as armed as you guys were. But it's the kind of the, the telltale double take of this is really stupid, but I have my orders, but I shouldn't do this, but I have my orders. Um, that it's Clearly, he is between his own better judgment and what the higher what the higher ups have told him to do, what hmm. his superiors have set upon him, which is interesting, because letting you into the castle yeah. doesn't really strike you as a super higher up decision that would be a big priority right now. Yeah. Um. But he takes you up this large staircase. Maybe uh, uh, Darren's. Yeah, he's going to try this. Uh, so he's going to kind of try to comfort Arden loudly. Just say, it's okay. Ab- Abadar has planned all of this out. We actually have a place here. We're returning stolen property. Everyone is doing their job. Even though it's a very high-risk place, there's no there's no danger for Did- us because we're acting rightly within our position within the society. Well, well yeah, that that, 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 that is that is society. that is true. But do, do you know that this uh, this 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 castle and, and he'll he'll start kind of rattling off facts about the castle and how it was built and what stones and how old the stones were. Oh, I had no idea. Do go on. Through this conversation, uh, do it a little better. through this conversation uh, and the jangle of your assorted armors as you ascend the staircase up the side of the pyramid here to the castle gates, uh, the guard leads you up uh, where they open into a courtyard. The Outer walls of the castle itself at the top of the pyramid are completely detached from the interior structure. It's like uh, I told you. You're leaving like a large, full courtyard that goes all the way around the uh, primary castle, or the primary keep itself on the inside. Uh, there are several other structures and buildings throughout this courtyard built into the inside of the wall or freestanding. Um, there are notably a set of hippogriff stables 
against the uh, southeastern wall here where some of the Sable Company's birds are still set. That You can see that they have flown, uh, possibly the ones that have flown in from last night. In fact, they would be completely full uh, at the moment. But they would lead you into the castle proper and up a wide set of winding stairs just off the main entryway to the third level of the castle. And into a uh, small, but not uncomfortably so, not cramped reception area um, where there is a single table and a chair in the distance and only a couple of doors leading in and out. Uh, inside sat, or standing next to the desk is a woman drawn up in incredibly spectacular full plate. If you're looking for this art, it's not on there. Uh, incredibly spectacular full plates. Uh, very well wrought, engraved, and embossed all across. Like the ones on the cover of the book? Yes. <laughs> it looks exactly that, yes. Okay. That's wow. what they are. Um, so, yeah, it looks like that one on the cover of the book. It's, it's <laughs> very, and it, uh, I was about to get to the red cape and the scarf and everything. And yeah, it, that's what's on the front of the book that I hold up all the time. Okay, yeah, you see that part. I see the inside mm -hmm. part. I literally forgot they were on the cover. Who looks at the cover? Yeah, well, not me. I look, I want the meaty bits in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wow, wow, is that the queen? But it is a fairly intricately wrought set. Um, but with a helmet that she has under her arm and a, a similar long sword with just the slightest bit of a curve to it mm. on her hip as well. Mm. Um, she has pretty long black hair that runs down past her shoulders that isn't tied up at all, which tells any of you with any kind of military experience that she didn't just like take the helmet or off or anything. She is just wearing it as a purpose of, or holding it as a purpose of presentation. Mm -hmm. She clearly has not had it on recently. Uh, but she is... Quite attractive. She's got really dark eyes, a fairly sharp nose, um, rather heavier features, but not overpoweringly so. Uh, you can tell even just from the bit of her, like the neckline and what you can see under the armor, that she is uh, very well built under that set of full plate. Uh, but she kind of nods as the group of you enter, uh, sort of quickly to the group of you. Uh, greetings. I received word that uh, you found something that belongs to the queen. Is this correct? Do I know... Does this person have a rank or... It would not be someone you would know. They would not be a direct attachment to either the civil company or the Corvosan Guard. Okay. This is like a royal guard kind of thing. Okay. It's a separate So uh, Darren's mind is going to go, she's highborn, basically, is kind of where his... That's not wrong. She, it would be, you would recognize her attire for sure as royal guard. Yeah. Um, so that is a totally separate entity from the other two. Uh, uh, Arden's just going to bow. Uh, my lady... Uh, we uh, discovered this. Uh, we discovered this brooch at the. Uh, um, well, I guess we'll start at the beginning. Uh, there's a petty criminal who is causing a lot of trouble. Uh, well, a so few what? days for quite some time. He's gonna uh, raise his hand. I think this is a story not so much for me, perhaps, but for the queen herself. What? The Sorry. queen herself? Were you un un under any misconceptions? Well, I no, wasn't no. rich. She would like to thank you for this oh, return. Oh, I, thank I just well, wow. it would be as easy I wasn't, as I mean, I wasn't dressed, um, I guess. We just thought we were going to be returning a brooch. I, There's no worry. She understands the situation in her city. If oh, she okay. is, well, goodness gracious, I wouldn't have thought that. Uh, I don't know what to What's say. What's the proper etiquette for greeting a queen? Does my hair look okay? Howdy, ma'am. And uh, <laughs> as, as the guard... <laughs> I, the guards I can't are still, salute her. The guards are still kind of behind you, and she, she turns past you to the guards. You may return to your posts. These heroes pose no threat to the queen. Clearly, so. <laughs> these, these idiots That's, are going to be it's fine. Like, I could kill them all. <laughs> I mean, they did strip all our weapons, and I... And the, the, gods, the guards nod and uh, salute briefly, mm -hmm. and then turn and head back down towards the stairs. And uh, the queen. she motions to the door behind, uh, past her behind the desk. Welcome to Castle Corvosa. And uh, opens it in the office and just gestures for the groupie to step through. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, I'll, uh, uh, I'll mirror the salute, actually, and uh, that I just saw the guards <laughs> give. And then I'll go just going to the... walk in with zero societal etiquette. I don't know highborn manners at all. Neither does Darren. He's just making an effort. I mean, <laughs> Flavin just looks up at her and goes, 
Yikes. Well, this leads into a fairly, <laughs> this doorway leads into a fairly wide hallway around the uh, eastern side of the keep itself with uh, a bunch of wrought iron barred large uh, cathedral style windows uh, nearly floor to ceiling letting a great amount of light shine through into the passageway. And uh, as you all kind of step in, uh, obviously not really knowing where you're going, uh, she comes out last to close the door behind her and then stride past the group of you. And uh, assuming you are just following, yeah. she makes no motion or anything. Mm -hmm. uh, as you're walking, she asks quickly, so how would you like to be introduced to the queen? Uh, well, uh, while we're standing here? I, I, you're, um, you're walking. She's yeah. going. You're on the yes. way there. I, I mean, are you talking as a group or as individuals? However you please. I'm Rath Nesky. Uh, uh, Arden. Would Arden. you like to all be introduced by your individual names? Uh, are you? Uh, we don't exactly have a group. We just kind of came together for a common cause. Circumstance policy. just put us together, really. We're, we're Corvosa. Uh, heroes of Corvosa. Absolutely not. Nope. I'm we, not. I ain't That a was hero. a joke. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh... Uh, her, I think her, her Majesty's roy uh, loyal subjects. Yeah, that works for me. And uh, as you're as you're kind of walking here, you see this is a, approaching a uh, fork uh, with a fairly large opening on the left, uh, whereas it continues down straight away. Uh, and as you're coming, Rathnetsky, Arden, Darren Copperbell, uh, Darren Copperbell, Jean Tilla, Floblade. And she kind of looks down at you, raises an eyebrow a little bit, and turns back up. And uh, about this time, she reaches that doorway and rounds the corner in. And as you all come around to this opening, this leads directly into the throne room. And the five of you, no preparation, turn this corner to the Crimson Throne with Queen Iliosa sat upon it. That was your prep time. <laughs> And she rounds the corner, helmet still under her arm, in a uh, loud voice, she announces, Presenting to Her Majesty, Queen Regent Iliosa Arabasti, those who uh, have come to return your gift from the late king, uh, Rethnetsky, Arden, Falkirk, Darren Copperbell, John Teller, and Floblin. Floblin. And uh, you see that the stone floor that led into this gives way to a massive, lush red carpet that dominates much of the center of this chamber. Uh, the room is wide and fairly vast and stationed with uh, quite a few more similarly dressed guards up and down either side with matching full plate to what Sabina is wearing, but they have their helmets and uh, massive glaives placed next to them. Upon the throne itself is Queen Iliosa. Some 30 feet back from the doorway as you come around the corner. A vision of, as, as the, the, the stories do not lie, a vision of absolute beauty. Even as she sits in a black morning dress uh, with a veil that she has perched on her head uh, in honor of her husband's death. Uh, she sits there with a small silver box resting in her lap, a coffer not much bigger than a shoebox. The throne room itself, uh, down either side behind the guards, are huge stained glass windows, um, as this third story is the top of the keep, and this throne room uh, it rises up above most of the bulk of the castle, allowing sunlight to stream through them from both sides, where these brightly colorful fractal images of Corvosa's past kings and queens run down either side of the room. Crimson tapestries hanging between each of them. The room is pristine and near awe-inspiring up to its massive vaulted ceiling 40 feet above. Uh, there is a huge fireplace back behind the throne, uh, which gives the room a decent warmth, even with its size. But the light from the fire, dominated by the sunlight streaming through these stained glass windows here, uh, giving it an almost sort of unreal appearance was this all this mix of these reds and oranges and yellows and even the bits of blues and greens from the art in the windows. Oh God, what am I doing here? And to uh, Sabina, who took the brooch from you when you came in, 
uh, continues walking after the introduction all the way up to the throne, mm -hmm. ascending a pair of small steps uh, where she kneels down before the queen and bowing her head, holds the brooch up to her. Uh, uh, Darren will kneel. Kneel. <laughs> kneel. That's something we do. Um, just He's never um, met the queen before. Floblin actually, you know, bows because he does have some etiquette despite being, you know, a little goblin. trash goblin. <laughs> Let's kind of look at Wrath. Wrath? Yeah, probably just follow the suit. I don't okay, know what kneel I'm down. Doing. Everyone else does. He kneel down. Um, Iliosa takes the brooch from Sabina, kind of nods to her. Uh, and Sabina stands back up and with a flourish of her cape turns and strides up to the left side of the throne, turning back around, putting her hands behind her back, standing in a parade rest adjacent to the throne alongside the queen. She just kind of holds it in her hands and looks it over for a moment. You may rise, my subject. All right, rise we shall. And uh, so too does she, as she uh, takes the little coffer off of her lap in one hand and stands up from her throne, not going, not moving anywhere, but standing as well. Uh, the small uh, plinth she's on here is raised dais, putting her about a foot over most of the rest of the room. This brooch was stolen from me some time ago. I had not expected to see it again, truth be told. And yet... You know, on my darkest day, you come before me with kindness. And uh, she turns and lays the brooch down on the huge, wide arm of this throne so you can hold the coffer with both hands. And uh, looks at it for a second before she looks back up at the group of you. The return of this brooch is much more than an honorable deed. This is inspiration. <laughs> this hope. I love Corvosa, as my husband did before me. His death has shocked the city, as it has me. But I will not see his legacy destroyed in death, and I shall not see his city torn apart. All Corvosa stands at the precipice of a disaster wrought by her citizens. You have seen the riots, I am sure. They cannot continue. You have already done my heart a great service in returning this precious heirloom to me on this dark day. And she casts her gaze back down to the brooch on the armrest. And you shall be rewarded. And she holds the coffer out a little bit. And uh, Sabina steps forward and she hands the coffer to Sabina, who takes it, bowing her head, and then comes down the stairs up towards the group of you and presents it out to whoever would be closest. Well, the Johns. Yeah, yeah. just... <laughs> Is that open it? Is that uh, reach bed again? Where? As he's opening it. You're opening it up inside, and this chest itself is a beautifully wrought little piece of silver work. Like, it, it itself is probably quite valuable. But inside the red velvet lined interior are eight solid gold ingots imprinted with the royal seal of Corvosa. Ooh. <laughs> That's why it's so heavy. I <laughs> A little heavier than you expected to be, perhaps. <laughs> the ingot, not huge ingots, like an ingot's so, like, like little. It's so heavy. Bullions. Like, it's little, yeah, they're like little couple inches. It's so, like, so heavy. It's not mm. like a giant iron bar. Yeah. Like, they're, and they're very thin. Okay. So it's not like, it's not, you didn't get 10 pounds of gold. It's heavier than it looks. <laughs> That's fair. Your, your, your majesty, I'm, I'm so sorry about the, the king. He's, he's the king to us, but. To you, he was your husband, and no, you shouldn't have had to, to face that, and I'm, I'm so sorry. I appreciate your sympathies. Truly, I do. <laughs> that you have brought such a small piece of his affection back to me warms my heart. But... If you, too, love this city, there's more I would ask of you. 
I would... Corvos and Guard is stretched thin. You could certainly use the aid of heroes such as yourselves. <laughs> uh, if you so choose, I will have Sabina see to it that you have an escort of guards when you leave here. They can see your safe journey to Cerdal Voshinik by Highbridge. I'll send word ahead of you to Field, Masha, uh, Field Marshal Cressida Croft. Let her know that you are on the way. I must retire to my chambers. I apologize for this brief visit, but my grief has drained me. Again, I thank you for the kindness that you have shown me, and I hope your days of serving the crown are only just beginning. Oh. Yes, your and, majesty. Uh, says, long live the queen. Long live the queen. Long live the queen. And, uh, she looks at you with a small smile and just nods very shallowly. And then uh, steps forward as Sabina queen. has made her way back to the throne. And, uh, she, uh, and the queen extends her hand and Sabina takes her arm and helps her down the few steps and uh, round behind the crimson throne itself out of sight for a moment. Leaving you just sort of here yes. in the throne room. Hmm. The high marshal? That doesn't leave a lot of room to say no, does she? The high marshal? This is a royal order. We're of course you're not saying no. We can't say no. We have to help yeah. her. She, she's in trouble. We don't well, I mean, have to help her. I think she really overestimates what we can do, but I, I, yeah. we, we're going to do our best. I, I, think, we I think it's we what just... we were meant to do, right? Well, I mean, no. what? The circumstances, we can't really say no. But... I haven't even graduated yet, and I'm going to meet the High Marshal? Let's just pass think of it as a field city. promotion. It's not even my city. <laughs> field Marshal, but, mm -hmm. yes. but it is. Marshal's a pretty <laughs> high <laughs> rank. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, Sultan. I didn't think I would be able to get my revenge on Lairman anytime soon, but with you guys helping me, we did... I thought it was impossible. I'm not and it's apparently he's a big crime lord in the city, so if we can do it as do that together, I'm pretty sure we can do anything. I don't think he was a big crime lord. He was Darren, just lucky. if we do this, we might be able to find my, my, my nephew. And besides, two oh, of, of us course. still have Lucy. At this course. point, Sabina comes back around. Her, her helm gone. Uh, back around from behind the throne, do making her way now? first up around to the front of the throne and then turning to face you directly. This time folding your hands in front of her. Uh, the Queen Eliosa uh, wishes me to ensure that you understand her displeasure at having to uh, forsake your audience so rapidly. But as oh, I imagine so you will all understand, she has had a very difficult day. Of course. The audience we knew we were having, so... God, God bless her for coming out for even so short a time. You have done her a greater service than you realize. That's brooch. It means a great deal to her. Can can we do anything anything more to help? I don't know how it got stolen in the first place. Something so valuable from the castle. Corvosa certainly wants for aid in these dark times. If you would accept the queen's offer, I will organize an escort for you to Citadel of Oshinik. You will need not fear those still roaming the streets. You will have an audience with the field marshal Croft. And be my honor. I, I know it's a little probably rude to ask, but what do exactly do I get out of it? Besides helping the queen in her good graces. It's a service to the queen regent of Corvosa. Not a reward in and of itself. I'm sorry, but this is not my city. I'm not from here. You know, you might be a bit... It's a bit forward and I apologize, but... You will be paid, of course. That's all I wanted to hear. Oh, I, I mean, I think it's our destiny, so of course we're going. You see kind I of... actually live here and greatly appreciate the queen's faith in me. I Listen, mean, I would I'm like sorry, it if people would Dan, be less likely I don't to stab have me. Any coin. <laughs> I just hold my coin purse and like, you hear two copper pieces dingling in it. Like, I don't have anything. We have to protect her. Yeah, Sabina right. starts uh, walking towards you. They're closing like 20 foot gap back to the throne. As she approaches, if you will follow me, I will escort you back to the gates of Castle Corvosa and have you seen on your way. Hey, and uh, walks straight through the group of you back to the doorway from which you had insert, entered again, just assuming you will follow behind it. Uh, following her. I mean... Gotta go get my gun. <laughs> right? Gotta go there, get a pile of weapons. <laughs> I think we have a pretty decent hook. <laughs> oh, wow. Yes. I gotta keep tying that back in. What? I gotta keep tying that back, back yeah. in. You're really, you're really smart at it. Ooh, that's the name of the show. That's the, <laughs> name, the name of the thing. And then, and then we roll the credits. <laughs> we do roll the credits. Well, we roll the a, dice, uh, then we roll a the brief credits. Outro. Uh, that is going to be where we conclude 
today's adventures. With so our... when are we doing Skull and Shackles, the hook, but everyone has to have one hook hand. You can choose <laughs> left or right. No. This is the hook. <laughs> I can uh, wear two white patches. You have to have one. All right. Have we, one. There has to be something to say that like we came here and they're like, these idiots. Just, what are, we're not worried about them. These idiots. We're, we're giving them. We're giving them swords and letting them go. It's like do they're adult clearly things. desperate. <laughs> they grabbed Rabble off the street. It is Rabble with good intentions. It is evident to anyone, whether you live in Corvosa or no, that the strangeness of this situation and the fact that you show up as a literal unknown and are immediately offered a meeting with the field marshal in the headquarters of the Corvosan guard is clearly desperation the queen did not lie to you the city is desperate for heroes and she gets us she gets you <laughs> idiots <laughs> basically this happens to anyone who comes over to try to do business in the palace it's like we must you must see me with the queen wait what wait what <laughs> we need your help I, i'm i'm a rice merchant <laughs> <laughs> no no some rice like, <laughs> arden is totally convinced that that's how this works now oh man well, next week, everybody, when we return, we will head to Citadel Volshinik and see how it is we can aid the city of Corvosa directly. <laughs> I want to use these freaking cards, but I guess we got to get more fights. Maybe use the cards. Hey, you come on, we had imps. You could have done some re rolls. I definitely yeah. could not have done any of these at the end. <laughs> the imps are not impossible shotting anything. That's like <laughs> you keep saying that. I'm thinking it's like only good if you're like in a drinking game in a bar. That's that's what I'm thinking is on that. It's not even a good, like a ranged attack. It's like impossible shot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when you would make a fortitude save against alcohol, don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Thanks for being here. Hope you're yes, all enjoying the show. This isn't the end of our adventures. It's just the hook. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>